After an impromptu off week, the Outlaw Sim Series takes two to Magic Mile up in New England for round 10 of 22 on the schedule. There was a change atop the standings two weeks ago at Watkins Glen, which now boasts the, the question, does Greg Holt have what it takes to overcome his recent troubles with six weeks left in the regular season? That question and more gets answered here, live on Pit Stop TV. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the virtual Loud in New Hampshire. Devin Zimmerman joins me on the call tonight. Vincent Cortez is on our social media coverage. And I'm Emerson Arden. And Devin, tonight, we're at the 1.058 mile flat oval. Promotes a high speed game of chess in technical, technical conditions. That's definitely right, Emerson. You can see on your screen there, it is a 1.058 mile oval here in Loudoun, New Hampshire. Uh, both turns are progressively banked from two degrees up to seven degrees towards the wall. Uh, they both are very, very similar turns. Uh, you wanna get, um, you kinda wanna get in early. You can kinda see there, it looks like there's actually four individual turns on that track map. And that's because there mostly are. Uh, these, these turns kind of act like an individual in each turn and you can run multiple lanes here. So we won't see guys running, you know, strictly on the bottom, strictly on the top. You can find your way around in multiple grooves here. So it should be some great racing by these drivers. Also, uh, just to make note, it is a very interesting pit road interest. So if he does come down to green flag pit stops, um, you don't want to miss pit road. You definitely want to get slowed up in time. You can see it on your screen there. It's a very late exit off of four. So you're going to be back on the throttle to keep your speed up and you got to get it woed down and turned in uh, quickly and safely to get onto this pit road. And it is also a very, uh, slow pit road speed so you got to get slowed down woed up uh, and don't let anything happen to your truck as you're getting down there but uh yeah it is loud new hampshire this week the magic mile it's going to be interesting it's going to be fun we're going to see some great racing from these drivers that can't wait to get to it absolutely you mentioned the high uh the, the multi-groove racing and uh, I, I i've been a fan of this race track and a huge advocate advocate for it in racing leagues because even though it is very difficult on corner exit, you'll see turn two be a calamity corner tonight more than likely. Uh, with just how loose you can get on that corner exit. Now these trucks, they're open setups, and these drivers are very good, cal uh, a great caliber of drivers. So I don't think they'll have as much trouble there. But turn two, nonetheless, is the turn that catches a lot of people out. But I'm more talking about when you when you come into these corners here in New Hampshire, you really do have th those couple choices. You can run that inside lane, which is almost preferred because it's a very flat racetrack. The shortest way around just makes sense. But you can still kind of get a diamond going if you go enter way up high and then kind of get that your, your truck or car angled to corner exit. Kind of use the apron even a little bit to get that truck to turn and then soar down the straightaway. Uh, y you can really make a lot out of this racetrack even though it's a very flat racetrack. There's very wide, a lot of opportunities for you to place your truck where you think it feels best. That being said, about feeling best, two weeks ago, we were at the upstate New York high-speed road course up at Watkins Glen, and Joseph Kazi is now the point leader by 27 points over Greg Holt. It was almost the opposite of that coming into Watkins Glen. Kazi got his third win on the season, and the change has been uh, very much showing that uh, Joseph Kazi has taken over as the title threat this season, Greg Holt, they're in second, 27 points back. Jeremiah Stutzman in third, 98 back. Tyler Markle kind of working his way clear of the rest of the competition as he gets his way up to fourth, 122 back. But the driver who's really rallied up in these point standings, Seth Fitzpatrick, struggling in the points coming into last week's race at Watkins Glen. He was in the playoffs, but after what he saw, what we saw earlier in the season, we expected it to be a little bit higher. And now he's clawed his way back up there with a phenomenal showing at Watkins Glen. He's up there in fifth. 141 back at Joe Zakazi. But here's where it gets tight. He only has four points ahead of sixth place Seth Berger. Then he has 12 over Kyle Lingerfeld. And, well, 14 over Kevin Thompson. 15 over Bothwell and Satzer. And then we still it gets really tight on this playoff bubble as well, Devin. It does. We have uh, Devin Smith there in 11th place making up some positions. And he's uh, now in 11th inside the playoff cut line. But just barely 11 points. Uh, 12th is going to be James Gilliard. He's only 10 points clear of the cut line right now. And then on the cut line with a win, Farron Elam Jr. So very happy to have that win. I'm sure 
he is right now. Only five points clear of the cut, uh, but that really doesn't matter to him. What matters most is the guys who are coming next. Max Service, five points out. Uh, Joshua Landfox, another. He's also five points out. Then we have Jason Miz, who's 11 points out, tied with Andrew Pratt there, 17th, 11 points out. Then it takes a nice big jump uh, back to Brandon Richardson. These are some guys who, I mean, they they pretty much need to get to the point where they're going to have to win and get in. Um, they can still make up some points here, and maybe some guys in front of them have some off nights, but it's going to be very, very tough uh, to make it strictly based on points from, this, uh, from how far we are in the season. So Brandon Richardson there in 18th. Uh, John Mickey there in 19th, and then Doug Psalms in 20th. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, we're getting to crunch time. Tonight is the sixth to last race of the regular season, and then uh, we got five, you know, races leading into the rest of, uh, I'm sorry, five races leading in to the playoffs. And we can go ahead and take a look at the schedule as I'm already bringing it up. We've gone through already that first half of the schedule, but we're looking at it here. We're starting tonight with New Hampshire. Uh, after a, an impromptu off week, a little bit of a mid-season break, if you will. Then Pocono. We go from the Magic Mile to the High Speed 2.5 Mile Tricky Triangle. Then we go to Dover, the One Mile Monster Mile High Banked Oval, banked on the straightaways even. Then we go to the One one and a Half Mile at the Charlotte. Then we go to the Flat 1.25 Mile Gateway. And then we go to the Seven eighths of a mile short track at Iowa. Devin, I mean, the run to the playoffs is absolutely insane, and it gets even more hectic as you get to the playoffs. It does. I mean, you look there and you see we have three 1.5 mile tracks in a row. We've talked about it before uh, 16th, 17th, and 18th races of the season Kansas, Kentucky, and Texas. Well, all three of those tracks run completely different from each other, and I mean, they're all very unique 1.5 mile tracks. Uh, especially in the sim here uh, of i racing so i mean even though they are 1.5 miles it's still going to be very tricky to master all of them uh, just because they run so different then we start getting into just chaos to end the season uh, we're going to go to the charlotte roval as the 19th greatest race of the season then we head to talladega and i mean that's that's amazing there you know we're going to talladega that late in the season that's going to have some major consequences there and then right after talladega we're going to go to bristol a 0.5 mile bristol we're going to see some beating and banging for guys trying to get into the finale at atlanta it's going to be chaos it's going to be amazing and i mean you just got to stay in and stay tuned it's, it, it only gets better from here absolutely it only does get better i want to say this schedule has been a phenomenal show thus far we even went into Watkins Glen thinking eh, it might not be that good of a show. And though it was a little aided with a Joseph Cosby pit lane penalty. Man, oh man, the great show that Fitzpatrick and Cosby put on that at Watkins Glen. And I'm only expecting more phenomenal showings from a, such a great caliber of drivers. The rest of this Outlaw Sim Series gunman trucks schedule. That being said, we're here at Loudon, New Hampshire at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway here for round number 10 to 22 on the Outlaws Sim Series calendar. On the far side of this break, we're going to be catching up with a couple of drivers getting some pre-race thoughts before they go ahead and tackle the, mo the Magic Mile tonight. Have you found yourself trying to hide your joy because you're unhappy with your teeth? Your smile is the first feature noticed in an interview, on a date, or in family photos. We want you to be able to shine bright as your best self, and our teeth whitening system is the perfect step toward restoring your confidence. Sound art is a product that is a speaker and it's art. We combine it together and we call it sound art. What makes it so unique that any picture can be your speaker? Sound art gives you the high quality sound without the ugly speaker. This isn't a picture with the speaker, the picture is the speaker. Just imagine your wedding picture uh, uploaded onto a canvas and now it's speaking 10,000 tunes. I mean, it's a very cool concept. 
What we like so much about it that you can take anything that means something very special to you, upload it on the canvas, have it hanging up in your room, your balcony, wherever you want to put it, and now it's a speaker. I mean, how cool is that? It's, it's, it's something that we have that and no one has. No one has this product. It's just a great gift to give anybody. It's just a neat concept. Around here we say, art never sounded so good. Welcome race fans back to the virtual loud in New Hampshire. We're here at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway for round number 10 of 22 on the Outlaw Sim Series Gunman Trucks calendar. And before we get too far into things tonight, of course, we have to give a huge shout out to all of our partners here at Pit Stop TV. Vos like to Son Sound Art, your picture, your music. You provide the image that you want and we will custom create a beautifully framed high quality canvas with a built in Bluetooth speaker. With sound art, you get the best of both worlds. Visit TucsonSoundArt.com for additional info. Use promo code PitStopTV at checkout and receive 10% off of your purchase. Ever wish you could have a race engineer on speed dial? Well, now you can thanks to Race Pace, a driver development service and setup shop all in one. Work with Tyler, a real world race engineer, to step up your game before your next race. Pick up pace with Race Pace. And I encourage you, you'll have the Discord uh, link. On the bottom of your screen later on in the broadcast tonight. I encourage you to check them out if you're looking for some sports cars. That GT3 style is mainly great, great setup builders over there. And a lot of fun in that Discord community. You won't want to miss out, especially if you're into the GT3 racing. But when it comes to your appearance, you deserve the best care that money can buy. With locations in Auburn, Lewiston, Naples, and Saco, Maine, permanent makeup and cryo in Maine owner Ashley Boyer is a certified micropigmentation specialist who provides professional, safe, and personalized services. You can contact permanent makeup and cryo in Maine at permanentmakeupinmaine.com or you can call or text them at 207 358 8683. Whiplash Media specializes in various sim racing resources, including paint schemes, stream overlays, I iRacing camera packs and more. The official graphic and camera provider for Pit Stop TV, and you can grab your iBroadcast cameras today at www.pitstoptv.com. Of course, tonight, also, we have to give a huge shout out to BAM Racing Videos, and of course, BAM Racing Videos by a race fan for the racing community. You'll want to, of course, uh, like them on Facebook and check out all the amazing short track content that uh, BAM Racing Videos provides to the community there. And Devin coming into tonight's race, of course. Look at the practice times. There's still 10 minutes left in practice. Brad Boffwell, top of the charts. We're looking to see if Boffwell can get back on his streak again. Look for his fifth pull on the season. It'll be very interesting to see how that fares. But we look at the times. There's a lot of names up here that are looking to maybe kind of eye for some mid to late season uh, strong runs here. Definitely so. One of those being Joshua Land Fox. So we we're going to see if we can get him into the booth, kind of pick his brain. He's sitting there really close to the cutoff line. Uh, I know he wants to get closer. So uh, maybe we can pick his brain a little bit, see how he's feeling. Uh, Mr. Joshua Land Fox, do you have a copy? I do. 
Hey, how's it going, man? It's been a while since we talked to you. It's glad to ha or good to have you back in the booth. Um, you're so close to that cutoff line, man. How are you feeling going in tonight at New Hampshire? I'm hope hoping for a little bit of luck this week. Um, I went out there. I've struggled a little bit in practice besides that one good lap. Um, I really do want to perform good. This is my home track. So hopefully we can have some luck on our side and we can gain some points on the guys in front of us. I mean, it's always good to race at your home track, and hopefully your home track brings, brings you better luck than mine. Mine is Charlotte, and I always run horribly there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, it'd be great to see you get back up there. I mean, you're battling for this playoff position. We only have, what is it, six or six or so races left in the regular season. I mean, we're getting down to crunch time here. Um, you know, how are you, how are you feeling about that as far as, you know, your chances the rest of the way as we kind of wind down the regular season? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident with the tracks coming up. I think I have a good chance there. And I like some of the, some of the tracks and how they drive or whatnot. Um, as long, my goal is basically to stay out of trouble. Um, in the last few weeks, I've been putting myself in situations that I wouldn't necessarily normally put myself in, but um, just trying to learn from my mistakes and stay out of trouble from here on out and hopefully make our way into the playoffs. Well, yeah, I hope so. And I was going to touch on that uh, just the last couple of weeks. We've kind of seen uh, abnormal of, you know, you being involved in incidents and, and uh, you know, things that weren't, you know, what you were hoping for. And uh, I just wanted to see if, you know, if maybe that was possibly, you know, just a little bit of urgency in the back of the head there to make the playoffs or, you know, it's just a uh, bad place, wrong place, wrong time, bad decision or whatever. But, you know, just wanted to see if, if uh, you know, it, is it, you know, that, that, sense of urgency to to kind of you know start making up some positions in in the playoff hunt um i, I think um i'd say it's a little bit of both uh more of more urgency than anything um trying to be just a little bit more aggressive with my driving style and kind of putting myself in situations and i mean most most of the most of the situations i've been in haven't been my fault but it's just wrong place wrong time and hopefully Hopefully we can get stay out of trouble. Let me stick a record. <laughs> I understand that, and I hear you. And we would love to be able to talk to you uh, post race, um, you know, and not have to, you know, to call out the uh, that '66 truck being involved in an incident. But uh, before we let you go here, I just want to say I, I, I love the race suits on your race team. We're looking at them right now; they look awesome, yeah. and uh, so does the truck. There it looks amazing. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to race uh, last week. Uh, due to some uh, issues beyond our control, but still, you know, it's nice to see these patriotic paints coming out uh, in support of September 11th and, you know, what that means to uh, the, you know, United States and and some of our allies. So it's, it's good to see these trucks. So I just wanted to give that a quick shout out. But now I want to give you a shout out and let you uh, thank whoever you got to thank. Shout out whoever you want to shout out. The floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, thanks for everybody tuning in, watching and watching the broadcast. And shout out to. All my DHR teammates at Dark Horse Racing, and hopefully we all get a good finish today. Well, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, good luck tonight. Uh, I want to see you get up there in the playoffs and challenge these things, make it interesting. So uh, good luck. Uh, hopefully you can keep up that uh, where you're at right now. I mean, you're not far off, man. I think you could do it. Yeah, thank you. We will find driver number three, Greg Holt, down second in the point standings right, for the first time since you took the points lead, Greg. Now, uh, rough stretch of races thus far, but you're racing at home tonight. Uh, what's it going to take tonight for you to kind of brush all what happened the past few weeks to the side and uh, get your mind back in the game for a championship run here? Oh, just keep it clean. Keep the tires under you, and we'll be good, I think. I mean, we get some green flag runs here. Uh, I think you see a lot of people falling off and smacking the walls. Yeah, absolutely. New Hampshire being one of the most difficult tracks, one of the most difficult ovals on the NASCAR circuit just because of how flat it is. And uh, I, I alluded to it in the intro that this is kind of a high-speed chess match. Well, what do you think when you come to New Hampshire? 
that, I mean, honestly, it's the biggest thing. It's not going to be about the, the quickest lap. It's going to be about having the most consistent laps and being that guy that's not going to knock down the wall or just over rotate on exit. I mean, it's going to be rough. I mean, it's, I don't know because, yeah, I don't know about some of the other drivers and racing here. So I guess we'll see. I feel confident, but that doesn't mean crap when you got 30 plus other guys out there going to be ready to knock your door down. Not on purpose, but can happen. So I, I do want to reflect a little bit on the little stretch of races we had before then, you know, with the uh, Bristol dirt and then wrecking out early at Watkins Glen. What what was it about, I guess, about those two incidents that, uh, that, that you were kind of in that situation to begin with? Was it just maybe the track type isn't your type or was there more to it? Uh, that happened uh, at Bristol and Watkins Glen. No, no, Bristol, is, the, the dirt tracks are not for me. If it had been regular Bristol, I'd have been game on. Would have loved it. Um, and Watkins Glen, I'm just not much of a, a road racer. Um, practiced quite a bit for that one, but just made one mistake, and that's all it takes at one of those, you know, one of these tracks. You knock down one wall and you're done. So it was what it was. We'll survive and we'll carry on. So now. I have to ask. Now we get to some pavement the rest of the season, the rest of the regular season, and uh, no more road courses until until V playoffs. Six regular season races left to counting tonight. Twenty seven points back to your teammate Joseph Cossey. Now that that's a bad fast driver. Do you have what it takes to gain twenty seven points in six weeks on him? You know what? Honestly, in the what we got seven weeks of regular season, we ain't. It's not about that. We we just trying to make the playoffs and win as many championship points as we can and get the advantages we can to make it to the next round, I guess. Right? There are championships in this, or is it just a regular season? Crap. Uh, we, we have six races remaining in regular season county tonight, and there is a championship points up for grabs for I mean, for the, everybody in the top ten, I believe, in, in the playoffs. So uh, there, there's a little bit to ra race for there. But if that's the mindset, though, to make the playoffs, uh, we have no doubt that once that reset comes, you'll be ready to go. Uh, at it once we get to the mile and a half and all in the playoffs. Oh yeah, yeah, no, we just want to we we try to have a little fun with it too. It doesn't need to be you know all crazy every week, but we like to win. But there's what I think there's probably five or six of us that are running in here all together. So I'd like to see some of those guys get a win too if we can if it can work out that way. All right, so I mentioned it a little bit already, but being that you're from Maine and this is New Hampshire, this is pretty much the most this is the closest track you have on the active NASCAR schedule. What does it mean to you? I, I guess it as a home track type of feeling, does it, does it feel like a home track to you? I mean, it, I mean, it is the closest track. I've been to this track a whole bunch of times in real life. I've never been a huge fan of the way that this track has raced in real life, but yeah, no, I mean, it would, it would be cool to win it, you know, but uh, you know, I, I want to win. I want to win them all. It doesn't matter where they're at. Fair enough. Well, Greg, we will let you get back to it. You're right now 7th on the practice charts. We're getting ready to go to qualifying. We'll see how you fare there, and hopefully we're talking to you some more on the far side. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. And that was driver of the number three, second place driver in the point standings for the first time since, well, he gained a point lead earlier this season. And, Devin, uh, what, what do you take from that interview with Greg Holt? I mean, he's just a driver that's focused on one goal, and that's winning the championship. I mean... You know, the regular season is nice, but the ultimate end goal is always a championship in a driver's mind. I mean, you can win the regular season, sure, but if you don't take home the championship at the same time, I mean, what does that really get you? So he's focused. He's ready to go. Uh, I think we're going to see some big things from him. And uh, just wanted to point out, I mean, I know practice times aren't the, the all, you know, the, for the race, you know, translating, but uh, Greg is quite a bit. You know, quite a ways up on his teammate, uh, Causey, at the moment. Causey kind of mired down in 15th on the practice charts. Greg hold up in 7th. Um, and then, you know, I mean, anything can change in one week. Like you said, you beat down one wall, and a lot can change. So, I mean, we've seen uh, Joseph Causey have some mistakes this season. Uh, we've seen Greg Holt have some mistakes this season. So you just never know. Uh, we'll get to see when these drivers take to the track. Absolutely, and the session timer is ticking over now. The uh, practice session has officially concluded. We are now ticking over into our qualifying session tonight here at the Magic Mile, the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, the 1.058-mile flat short track. 
very wide, a lot of raceability here, and uh, it's going to be a fun night for sure at VAT again. Um, that, that's huge if we look at the practice times and if they mean that much. We'll see if Joseph Kazu would to claw his way back. We, he, we heard from him in his last area. He wasn't too confident about the New Hampshire uh, racetrack, but uh, here he is now. We'll see when, they, uh, when he gets his truck to the track, when he gets to race time, when it matters most where Joseph Kazu ends up. Yeah, and I think he's probably has a little bit in the tank as we see our first drivers hitting the track now. Uh, kind of a really narrow exit um, off of pit road, so you got to watch that. Here's Joseph Kazi in uh, the University of Miami Hurricanes truck that we've seen him in most of the season. And you notice uh, it's, we, we do this a lot at some ovals. Ooh, very loose off four there, but... Uh, we do this a lot at ovals when we set up our outlap. You run really high in turns uh, three and four. You try to get that straight line, as much of a straight line as you can off. A little loose coming off of two there. But uh, yeah, you try to get that straight line coming off so you can pick up as much speed as you can for your qualifying lap. Um, and I've seen this a lot from drivers. They're not getting all the way down to that yellow. They're kind of running this second lane up that seems to be the preferred lane tonight yeah we'll see here as Kazi crosses the line that first lap was uh not the best because he got sideways and out of two but he puts it second out of four right now we'll catch up with a couple other drivers and sets it now goes second quickest how about the 65 of Kyle Lingerfeld he's working his way off a of pit exit right now so uh catch up with the driver who's trying to go for his fifth pull on the season You can see kind of two different methods there. Causey was really diamonding uh, turn one and two. Uh, Bothwell more down in that second lane, uh, just kind of hugging it all the way around. And you see there, right here, oh, use the inverted banking on the inside. Try to get that truck to turn a little bit. It'll wash out a little bit out of four. Oh, I don't know if he got the wall there to the line. I don't know if this lap's going to improve or mean anything. It... It's quick, but it does not improve his lap time. But Brad Bothwell on the provisional pull right now, but still a lot of trucks left to go. Yeah, and I think he'd like to be a little bit more clear than he was. Uh, had that, that mishap out of four. But, uh, yeah, here's, uh, this is going to be an out lap, I believe. And you see you run high in three or four, get off low off of four. Try and pretty much straight line it and get up as much speed as you can for this qualifying lap. Uh, high entry here yeah you you can actually tend to enter high if you can really nail that in oh wow big moment there for brandon richardson the number 29 trying to hang on to that truck and uh wow big moment there for richardson don't think he was able to uh hang on to it there he is yeah it, look, yeah, it looks like he kind of backed out of that lap he's gonna try and set up the next lap maybe he gets one more attempt at it, but Brandon Richardson, you'll see there, you can enter high, and uh, it's kind of to keep as much speed as you can into the corner, and you have to really get it angled low here as you come off the corner. Get That straightaway to be really, really long. And that's all you're doing on both ends of the track is making the straightaway as long as possible. Greg Holt has slapped the third quickest as he goes for another lap. Uh, back into the truck coming around there for Richardson. Held on to it, but that's going to cost him some time off of four. It'll be invalidated. Four of a 29 truck. We'll catch up to the 89 truck of Kevin Thompson. He's now put it 10th quickest and is looking to improve now on his third and final lap. Yeah, and he's kind of running that same line as Bothwell. Kind of dives it into that, that second groove and hugs it all the way around the turn. Let's see what he does in three and four here if he kind of runs it the same. Yeah, late, late dive in, tries to get down to that second lane, only able to get to the third lane this time. Looks pretty stable, though, off the turn. This might be a pretty decent lap. As Kevin Thompson comes across the line, he'll put it sixth quickest. Not bad for the Georgia native in the 89 truck. And we now have 12 trucks who have slapped times on the board. And we're still awaiting more. As we get to the halfway point in this 12, uh, in, in this 10 minute session with 12 truck to set times, uh, we now have Jeremiah Stutzman, who found himself a clear racetrack, and he's heading out onto the racetrack. Yeah, Stutzman, another guy looking to have a good run. He, uh, 
you know, he's got one win on the season, but wants a couple more. And, you know, if there's anybody who's going to try and pull some type of mental chess game, it's going to be him. So we'll see what he has in store for tonight. But, I mean, he's been decently fast all season long. So I fully expect him to be up here towards the top. First lap of three for Stutzman. And he'll work his way in that second groove up off the bottom. Down the straightaway. Not really fighting the truck, which is signs of a happy truck. He works his way down the straightaway. But is it fast? So he sends it down into turns three and four. Working its way along. Again, that second lane sideways out of four. He'll hold on to it, but he'll throw away that lap and basically the next lap as well. Yeah, so, I mean, you can kind of use this like as a uh, F1 style qualifying, you know, just with no cars on the track other than you. So you get that first lap, try to go as fast as you can. If you can't do it, then take the second lap, cool down the tires, and then go for it all in the third lap. So that's a strat uh, strategy that some of these drivers might try to take. He's pretty even off of three and four that time. Uh, back end looks a lot more stable now. We'll see what he does on his uh, third final lap here. Devin Smith will put a 13th quickest as Stutzman goes 10th on his second lap. Third lap for Stutzman. He'll go around out of turn two. Yeah, I tried to put too much power into it getting off the turn and just looped it. So... Yeah, that's just, you know, that's, you got to find that edge. And uh, he stepped over just barely. But, uh, yeah, here's uh, Max Service now. He's a bit loose off of turn four. Driver of number 81, the Canadian. This is a track that's close to him proximity-wise. He goes fifth quickest in the number 81 uh, Chevrolet Swift Dorado, he'll say. Yeah, he's been showing a lot of speed lately in this truck. Um, you know, kind of been up towards the front. Had some issues, you know, uh, the last couple weeks. Um, then kind of was kind of mired in that fourth and fifth position. Ooh, very loose all four there. But kind of mired in fourth and fifth position at Watkins Glen. I'm sure he'd take it. You know, wow. he doesn't consider himself the best road racer. But, man, he's getting close to that pole. We go third quickest on that second lap. Tyler Markle puts it seventh quickest on his second. The third and final lap. What's it going to be? I'm going to catch up with last season champion Seth Berger and teammate to max service there as they worked their way around this racetrack. Two minutes and some change left here in this qualifying session. And the Berg Arts Flood Brothers. Chevrolet Silverado works his way out of turn number four. Seth Berger on his first timed lap will put that number 77 truck. I believe that was his first, uh, he started his first timed lap. So my apologies there. I have to say his truck and Causey's truck, very similar. It's going to be hard to kind of say which one's which here, or maybe <laughs> very similar paint schemes on these guys. Of course, one of them is the uh, Berg arts truck. The other one is the university of Miami. Uh, but both of them, they're orange and green. I mean, they look good. Oh, yeah. And uh, Bergart, so he'll be happy, and uh, Burger Nation will be happy to shout out the Instagram page that is there on the spoiler of that number 77 truck. Uh, Seth himself, he, he he will hand draw, hand paint, uh, and hand design clothing. It's a nice little art style. If you're into it, you should check out the Instagram to see if you are. Uh, and he is selling uh articles of clothing with his art style on it it's a it's a great little page go ahead and check it out there uh the instagram is on his uh truck there on the spoiler joshua gaff right now also on the racetrack and his number 27 yeah and as we clicked away from burger he puts it fourth fastest these guys are getting quicker in service burger lacy all challenging waffle just not able to get to him but so close uh, the top five, less than a tenth. Or top six, less than a tenth. Well, it all comes down to this. And Joshua Gaffright will put it 19th quickest. And that will do it for the qualifying session. There's no other trucks who are taking two of a racetrack in the final 15 seconds. And uh, Devin, Brad Bothwell, he's done it again. Yep, he's done it again for the fifth time this season. He's trying to start a new streak. Brad Bothwell will take home the Pratt Tile and Stone Pole Award here at the Magic Mile in New Hampshire. 
Pratt, Tile, and Stone serving Central Vermont since 2005. Speaking of Central Vermont, I mean, this is a home track for them as well. Uh, Andrew Pratt there. So uh, good luck him, to him tonight. And uh, thank you again to all of those at Pratt, Tile, and Stone for sponsoring the Poll Award. Absolutely. And continue on with the Poll Award talk. Of course, it is Brad Bothwell with the Pratt, Tile, and Stone Poll Award for the second race in a row. Lane and Lacey. We'll qualify second in his number 53 truck. Row number two, it'll be the driver at number 81, Max Service. To his outside driver number 77, Seth Berger. Two championship contenders in row uh, from last season in row number two. Row number three, we'll find a 66 of Joshua Fox and the five of Matthew Sezer. A couple teammates there. Row number four, it'll be Tyler Markle in the 42 and Greg Holt in the three truck. Looking to begin his quest to retake the point lead. And in row number five, it'll be the 33 of James Gilliard and the 98 of Theron Elam Jr. And then in row number six, we're going to have Joseph, or sorry, Kevin Thompson in the 11th position. Joseph Causey to his outside. Row number seven, we'll see the 95 of Devin Smith and the 55 of Jesse Adams. Row number eight, Jeremy Poole will be 32nd and Jeremiah Stutzman in the 71 on his outside. Row number nine is going to be Kyra Lingerfelt in the 65. And then a new driver to uh, for tonight, John um, Mustaine, I believe is how it's said. I'm sorry if I butchered that, John. But uh, you'll be on the outside in the one truck. And then in row number 10, Joshua Gathright in the 27, and Brandon Richardson in the 29. We find our way back to row number 10. And our uh, social media uh, person has made his way into the session. He's not racing, so he will uh, not be taking to the grid. Now, number 69, it'll be Seth Fitzpatrick. In row number 11, he'll have Adam Gardner alongside of him. Garrett Velsey there in 24th. 25th, Randall Barnett. 26th, it'll be Daniel Park. 27th will be Eric Peck. 28th, Andrew Schroeder. And 29th will be Doug Solms, who just had his birthday this week. So happy birthday, Doug Solms. And uh, hopefully you have a great run tonight, buddy. And rooting for you as the field works their way off the grid here at New Hampshire. And... This track is just over one mile, so I'd imagine this is only going to be one pace lap. And that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the weather conditions coming into today's race, Devin. 101 degrees the track, temp 82 degrees the air, temp 8 mile per hour winds out of the north. What, what say you about these conditions? Hot and slick. It's going to be hot and slick. Take it easy on turn one and turn two, fellas. Calamity Corner is waiting. Uh, you don't want to put it in the wall and turn one. You know, in the first uh, couple turns, so take it easy. <laughs> Absolutely, and well, a field of twenty-eight trucks will work its way down the back straightaway here at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. The Magic Mile, and the field is in the hands of the driver of the number thirty-one, Brad Bothwell. He's trying to make something happen here with his fifth pull on the season. We await the field fourteen rows deep. To file behind the pace car who has now just found its safety into the pit lane. Brad Bothwell is going to lead us to the green here at New Hampshire. Something amiss for Brad Bothwell on the start. He finds his way back to the third position as Landon Lacey is now your race leader off of turn number two. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to that mean green 31 machine, but... He did not get going. I'm not sure if he missed a shift or, or what happened, but, man, that made Max Service have to check up big time. He's fallen way back in the order, back to ninth now for Max Service. Uh, what One driver that hit, this has helped is Seth Berger. He's made his way up to second from fourth, so I'm sure he's not complaining. But, man, that was that was not good for uh, that inside lane there. Yeah, something amiss, I'd imagine, on that inside lane, it's very slick down there, and he might, must have spun his tires, which has uh, really hurt Max. He's down in now the 11th position in that number 81 truck, and there's a little bit of uh, right side damage for the 81. Yeah, and his truck is, is, he's fighting the truck right now. It's just not where he wants it, uh, especially with that damage isn't going to help much either. So it uh, looks like he got tagged in the right rear. Uh, possibly from the checkup and uh, the guy behind him, you know, you just, it's hard to see when you're in the cockpit of these things. You can't really see the truck in front of you. So I uh, just didn't see the leader get going and uh, just plowed into the back of him. Unfortunately, 33 already, already has some damage there too as well. 
But look at him put on this show against Greg Holt, trying to fend off the uh, the driver who was pretty much the favorite driver to come in and take the championship away. Brad Bothwell is on his way into second, has gone fastest as uh, Gilly continues to stay up ahead of Greg Holt. Bothwell is powered by Seth Berger. And uh, maybe he had a bad start, but he is not out of it by any means. No, he's not. He's trying to track down Lacey here. He's taking about a tenth off. I mean, you can see um, he's kind of catching up there. Uh, Seth's kind of falling back just a bit. Maybe trying to save some tires, expecting a long green flag run. Um, another driver, uh, we talked to him in the opening, uh, Joshua Lamfox there in fourth. He's had a great start. Absolutely, and when you get here to New Hampshire, track position is everything. You'll you'll talk about tires and all that jazz, and of course, oh, we have a slow truck somewhere on the race track. Uh, Joshua Gaffright has destroyed the truck out of turn number two. Calamity Corner claims its first victim of the night. The number's twenty-seven of Gaffright. Uh, man, that doesn't look too too bad. It looks like he has some rear damage. I'm not sure if he had help or just. Maybe he lost it in the back end, hit the wall, tapped him around. We'll have to see here on the replay. We'll see here. This is driver number 27. And it uh, looks like we were not able to queue up the replay there. We'll try to get it one more time. All right, we've got it here. So this is driver number 27. Joshua Gaff right, right now. He's behind Devin Smith in the 95. I'm oh, no, sorry. It's the uh, 55 of Jesse Adams. And he's ahead of the two of Seth Fitzpatrick. I'm pretty sure he just loses it here out of two all by himself. Yeah. It doesn't look like he hit. Oh, he backed it in the wall. Okay. Okay. So maybe not a whole lot of front end damage. Shouldn't be too bad. It's just going to put him back. Um, you know, have to get that damage uh, fixed just a little bit. Uh, it, it, not too much of a concern being that it's the rear end might hurt him on the straightaway but uh, he should be able to continue um maybe just trying to put the power down to get the guy in front of him. he was catching a little bit so trying to make that pass that looked like just didn't pay off for him well the 53 of landon lacing continues to work his way as we work our way through lap number eight he got the first lap truck under the garret fells he darts to the inside of the racetrack I'd imagine this is to let them by, but that was a little scary to in the manner that that truck darted to the inside wall. Yeah, I think he was going to try and dive down and let these guys get by him, and maybe that truck just got loose on him at the same time. So uh, that's kind of what it looked like from, from that point of view, <laughs> just trying to get out of the way, and then the truck just lost it. So um, Joseph Causey, though, making up some positions, uh, and he's in front of his teammate. Greg Holt, who's kind of slitting back here. He's kind of mired in this middle pack, middle of the pack here. Uh, big traffic in front of him, too. Yeah, I think Greg just got pinned down to the inside, and these trucks are blowing by him on the outside. So Greg may be in an effort to save some tires. Uh, track where track position is everything. I don't know about all this. Yeah, and he continues to lose some spots. Just lost a spot there to uh, Tyler Markle in uh, the Callaway Golf Truck. Um, still stuck on the inside there, not able to get up. This looks like uh, that 42, though, has some damage on the right front. So some guys already finding some trouble early. Uh, he's able to get up now, so maybe he'll start to pull, uh, pick off his way back to the front. But looks like uh, just the trucks are not handling the way they want at the beginning of the run here. Maybe it'll come in as it gets later. I guess that, that'd be what Greg Wood is hoping for here, because this is... This is not fun to be free falling through the running order as your main championship competitor and your teammate just drives away from you. I'd imagine they're on similar uh, pieces of equipment as well. So that that will ask that'll bring a lot of questions. On top of does Greg Holt have enough to overcome his twenty point seven point deficit to Joseph Causey? Yeah, he gets real low here in turn one. Uh, it looks like he's being held up a bit by the truck in front of him, so that could. Uh, that could be influencing him as well. It does look like it's able to get out of the way. Oh, I think Tyler Mark will just yeah, pick I the think wall. Yeah, slammed the wall. Yeah, that right side of the truck is beat up bad. Hanging on to what he's got is the driver number 42. And sideways is the 25 of Eric Peck. He'll hold on to his number 25 machine. Fitzpatrick will power his way on by. Back up front, it is still the Landon Lacey show. He has seven tenths of a second over Brad Bothwell. 
who has about half a second over Seth Berger, and then they have a whole second over Joshua Fox, who has a near second over Kazi. That's how the top five is running at this moment. Is Greg Holt will get his way past Devin Smith and lose the spot right away. Yeah, he's trying to play that inside line and make it work, maybe try to do a slide job on some guys uh, powering into the turn on the inside, but uh, getting off the turns, that high line has the advantage. So you can see he gets alongside, but he's just not able to complete the pass. Uh, this time he's kind of stayed at that quarter panel, though, see if he can get it done, and this time at three and four. Uh, it's just not clear. Oh, is he going to slide up? He is. Ooh, Ooh just made it. But oh, sideways. Back. The 42 of Tyler Markle slams the inside wall. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's been having trouble all night and just puts it in the wall again. Oh, oh. no. I'm not sure who that truck that was, but that was close. Well, we saw a lot of that live. We're going to go ahead and see if uh, we can get a replay and see what happened to the 42 of Tyler Merkel. But I imagine he just got loose out of four by himself. Here's Tyler working his way through the center of the corner. And, yep, just a little too much throttle. Yep. Oh. And just that little tap right there is just enough to throw that engine off. Oh, my goodness. Hoo, hoo, hoo. That was close right there. That was nutty indeed. Uh, we continue on. We stay green. It is still Landon Lacey out in front. Randall Barnett has found his way to 19th over Seth Fitzpatrick. And they continue the battle. Actually, Fitzpatrick takes that spot right on back. And Daniel Park again into this mix. A nice little battle for the 19th position. Yeah, three trucks here kind of running similar or uh, different lines, but um, all battling here. Uh, Park is kind of running a little bit higher. Ooh, I don't know if he tagged the wall there, but he's running a little bit higher than that two truck in the turns. Uh, and then, of course, the 63 is down on the bottom uh, trying to make it work. It's just not working the best for him. You can see they gain on Fitzpatrick in the middle, but then they just kind of lose touch with him down the straightaway. Yeah, and... Uh... If it's Patrick, he's needing to get himself some runs back uh, once again. I mean, he had a great run at Watkins Glen two weeks ago. But uh, he needs to continue those kinds of runs if he's going to make a championship push here. I don't think he can be this, in this inconsistent and uh, still be a viable threat to the title. No, uh, you got you to gotta start to pick it up. I mean, this is where you try to start finding your form. Uh, for the playoffs, I mean, you can still find it a little bit later. We do have six races, including this one left. But, um, yeah, you got to start finding that form for the playoffs. Get yourself in the positions you want to be in and uh, start to master that truck so you will be uh, up towards the front for the playoffs and competing uh, for this championship. Greg Holt has made his way back into the top ten after battling through all that traffic. And so he's starting to make his places up along with Max Service. He's kind of... Uh, rebounded from his poor start. And uh, oh, there's another truck in the wall off four going really slow, Kevin Thompson. Kevin Thompson's truck is destroyed. and I'm thinking this is going to be something very similar. We're going to take another replay. And we do have a caution on the speedway, so this may very well have brought out the caution. He put it on the apron there, trying to get the truck to turn. Maybe uh, a little too tight for him. Oh, oh no, no, Garrett Felsey. Oh, Felsey. Oh, no. Oh, so it wasn't. It got tight on him. He just, oh, man, the 48 just came down and tagged him. I imagine the 48 was trying to get out of the way of the truck right behind him and just didn't know that, Vel that uh, Kevin Thompson had that big of a run. So right on board here with the 89 of Kevin Thompson down the straightaway. Oh, wow. A little dirt there from the 65 of Lingerfeld. We'll put Garrett Velzi offline. And then Velzi's just trying to keep it out the wall and bam. Yeah, yeah. Velzi's trying to keep it off the wall there. Yep. So uh, trying to keep it off the wall, the back end of the truck. You put too much wheel in it getting off uh, the tail end. is going to just turn around on you. That's... Uh, 
more than likely what happened. So, yeah, the 65 upset 48, 48 slid up. Tried to overcorrect it by turning in a little bit harder, over oversteered off the turn. And, uh, yeah, I collected the 89. Unfortunate for Kevin Thompson, nothing he could do there. But uh, it, it looks like uh, his night's going to be... Uh, he's going to keep it on the track, but uh, that thing is not not totally where he wants it to be. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you'll see him work his way off the pit lane here. Landon Lacey wins the race off pit lane, but uh, some trucks stayed out here. Daniel Park, Jesse Adams, Adam Gardner. I'd imagine these guys are just staying out, coming out pit lane this time around. Yeah, we'll see. It doesn't look like it. Oh. Oh, wow. This is... Some strategy call early here from the six and the, uh, what was that, the one truck. Yeah, the one is a lap down. Uh, several laps down. The one missed the start of the race. So the one truck should be dropping to the rear here. But Landon Lacey will start next to Daniel Park. This is very intriguing. Lacey making only his second start of the season. Made his first start last week at Watkins Glen and... Well, let's be honest, he was very fast, but the run was very abysmal. And that's Lacey trying to uh, show that he can drive one of these trucks, and that's what we'll be trying to prove tonight. But the six of Daniel Park staying out is very intriguing as well. I, I'd imagine there's some tire set limit when they come into play here. Maybe Park wanting to save a set of tires. Yeah, quite possibly, and I mean, you know, get himself out of the... Uh... You know, out of the rear of the field, get up to the front, try and lead some. But uh, like we saw on the restart, or is he coming in now? Is he coming in now? He is. Yes, is he is. coming in now. Okay. Well, just making sure he got a lap led, I'd imagine. I imagine so. But I was going to say, it's going to be real tricky because we saw how, uh, how upset the 31 truck got down on the inside. And I'm not sure that... Uh, <laughs> You know, old tires on the inside were going to be any better. It looks like a lot of guys choosing the outside lane here. That's probably a smart choice, considering. Oh! oh two trucks. Oh! That might have to be looked at. That guy was flying into the rear. Somebody was who was trying to make a choice. And, I mean, there's no need to be going that fast under caution. They're going to extend the caution anyway. I mean, you'll get an extra lap to catch up to the field. I don't quite understand why... Everybody's trying to run over each other coming to the line. Everybody's yeah, been they... through this except for the driver making his first outlaw sim series start. Yeah, I'm imagining that uh, that's going to be looked at by race control. Like you said, it, um, everybody kind of slows down. has got to make that choice. So, you know, of course, they slow down. One truck is going to get a waiver around here, it looks like. Um, possibly because they had to oh, redo the, uh, whatchamacallit, the... Uh, the pace laps here, but uh, interesting fact though, with that wave around, uh, New Hampshire was the first track to Im implement that back in 2003. So, uh, funny that we get to see it here. We don't get to see it often in that Lost Sim series. Uh, you know, most of these races go green, so we don't get to see a lot of lucky dogs given. But, uh, yeah, back in 2003, uh, New Hampshire was the first track to, in, in, to start doing uh, the free pass rule, uh, which is now known as the lucky dog. So, yeah, that's that's a kind of a cool little fun fact. <laughs> Very interesting there, Devin. I uh, I appreciate that being introduced to the broadcast. I mean, in 2003, uh, that, that's almost my entire lifetime. I was two years old back in 2003. I'm about to turn 20. Uh, just to give a little context there, that is it's wild. Um, uh, that my entire life, there's this been a free pass rule. I can't even think of the time that there wasn't a free pass rule. I can only imagine other motorsports at that. But nonetheless, here we go. By the way, Stage 1 will be scored at the completion of lap 32. So the iRacing.com safety car will find its safety in the pit lane. And Landon Lacey will bring the field to the green here at New Hampshire. A much cleaner start from the field. Seth Berger right there on the tailgate of Landon Lacey. Brad Bothwell, Joseph Causey going toe-to-toe -to -toe for third. Yeah, Joseph Causey got that caution. He's back up here. Ooh, really close to the wall. Keeps it off of it. 
Get a good run down that front stretch. He's the long side there for the third place position, trying to get that 88 machine into a podium position. Meanwhile, Seth Berger challenging for the lead on Landon Lacey. Very intriguing. It's very hard to overtake there on that inside lane, but how bad does Seth want a stage win? As he contends for a title, Landon Lacey will not be, even if he wins tonight, he will not make the amount of sets required to make it uh, into the playoffs. You have to make 75% of the regular season starts to make the playoffs, and he joined a little too late for that. But in that sense, Lacey trying to play a little bit of spoiler here as uh, Seth Berger wants to get some uh, some playoff points to his name. Yeah, and this is a perfect opportunity to do it. I mean, his big competition, uh, Kazi and uh, uh, Greg Holt are having some issues tonight. Uh, Greg Holt outside the top 10 again. He's in 11th. Um, I'm sure he's going to get back up there in the long run. But uh, Kazi, I mean, he's close to a podium, but Seth Berger's in front of him right now. And I, love, I know he'd like to keep that 88 behind him for as long as possible. Uh, what better place to do that than clean air? And so he's going to be trying to get to this uh, 53, but... Uh, man, Lacey's just pulling away a little bit now. Down straight away we go, and yeah, that does appear to be the case. They're coming around to three laps to go in the stage. Lacey way up there, but he's trying to get that truck to turn more than anything, and I think that will do it. Now, there's still three laps to go in the stage, and I mean, if it can happen, but at the same time, we're on lap 30 of 157, and I don't imagine too much will happen, but hey, you also did see a lot happen in the first few laps of Watkins Glen. As uh, Brad Bov has fallen out of the session. I don't know if he's uh, he's just lagged out, but uh, he'll rejoin. He will reconnect to the center. There he is. Oh, bad. That had to be kind of a ooh moment for him. You know, you blink out like that. Uh, you, you just don't always blinking out again, too. Oh, no. So some major blinking issues here for the 31 truck. He's back now, but man, he's uh, he's having some some issues there in the, that 31. Hopefully that can uh, sort itself out. You just sometimes there's just some, you know, gremlins in your in your computer machine, and uh, they work themselves out as the race goes along. It didn't look like he was having that problem in qualifying or practice. So hopefully it'll work itself out. And he'll be okay. Absolutely. Very scary stuff there for Brad Bothwell. We work our way on to the back straightaway once again. It's Landon Lacey with a near four tenth of a second advantage. And the turn 74 for the final time in stage number one. Landon Lacey making his second ever Outlaw Sim Series start. Well, come off a turn four and win stage one here at New Hampshire over Seth Berger, Brad Bothwell, Joseph Causey, and James Gilliard inserting himself into the top five, and he wants more. Looking for fourth. Yeah, James Gillier, big, big uh, winner off of that restart. Uh, made up some great positions. And uh, then the Stutzman behind him, uh, kind of one of the losers of um, of that restart was Joshua Lanfox. He was up in this position uh, before the caution came out. And now he's back in 10th, kind of. You know, uh, I think maybe partially due to one of the bad starts, maybe he started on the inside and just was not able to get the launch off uh, like we saw in the initial start. But uh, he should be able to make his way up. Another driver making his way up is that three machine, Greg Holt, our, was our points leader. Now he's 27 points back. Kazi, he is starting to make his presence known, but up to seventh. And with that stage, that'll give Kazi a few more points over Greg Holt making it about somewhere in the range of 32 points if we're keeping track of it live, which is huge. As Holt tries to work his way forward, Max Service is no slouch at that. He'll send it on in there. Service will try to pin him down, but Holt will try to power his way through V81, and it looks like mission accomplished. Yeah, big move there from the three truck. He powered it definitely in there. Uh, 71 truck just going to let him go. But, yeah, I mean, that was kind of close there for the uh, the 81 and the 3. Uh, now we got, oh, 71's loose off of 4. Jeremiah Stutzman trying to hang on to that truck as he'll lose the spot to service. And uh, Elam and, and more potentially. That 71 truck does not look like it's handling all too well. We saw it get sideways a little bit earlier as well. And right there, right behind Greg Holbert in front of Max Service, got sideways again coming off of turn 4. 
Yeah, something I missed there on the 71. Just uh, ill handling right now, but better that it's ill handling early in the race so you can fix it rather than later where you just kind of have to hold on. So uh, he can make some adjustments on that truck in the next pit stop and uh, hopefully get that thing uh, to his liking and start making positions back up. But like you said, it is kind of about where you, you know <coughs> you're positioning you know in this race rather than anything else. Um, and speaking of that positioning, the 31 truck is tired of running in third. He wants second place. Yeah, Brad Boffel trying to power his way by Seth Berger here. Side by side down the front straightaway. Seth hanging tough on the outside. Brad trying to force his way back down in there. Yeah, Brad Bothwell is so good on the inside right now. I'm not sure how long his tires can hang on doing that, but he gets such a good run off the inside that I don't see a lot of other trucks doing right now, and it's it's quite uh, quite a feat to be able to do that to maintain your momentum and speed on that running that low. He's kind of moved back up to that middle, but just making passes on the inside when other trucks can is a great advantage to have. Uh, that 31 truck starting to pull away from the 77 a little bit too, trying to catch uh, Lacey. Don't look too soon. He's bringing Joseph Kiazzi with him. As Kiazzi closes the gap, he's broken away from James Gilliard and Greg Holt looking to work his way into the top five as well. Greg Holt is not done yet. As he lost points there to Joseph Kiazzi in stage one. I want you to listen right here and look at the telemetry and you'll notice that uh, Greg Holt is shifting. He is. I mean, we might see this next week at Pocono as well. You can shift down and turn one at Pocono. Yeah, he's shifting down in the center of the turns, trying to help that truck turn. Uh, wow, yeah, he's he's giving it, giving a good shift there, trying to get the power down. Oh, dives it in here. Greg Holt is going to claim his space down at the bottom side of the racetrack, but... James Gilly is not going to give it up early. You have a damaged truck on the pit lane. I believe that would be the 47 of Andrew Schroeder taking it to the pit lane for uh, heavy damage. Greg Holt tried to power up the inside of James Gilliard, nearly making contact out of turn number two. Gilliard does a phenomenal job at fending off Greg Holt. Yeah, Gilliard's no slouch either. He's going to fight for this position. He gets such good runs. Off the turns, you can see it all. He just blies by as the three truck gets loose. Yeah, hold big time moment there out of turn four. I have to crack the throttle to hold on to that three truck. And I'll have to regroup and try to go at Gilliard again, I'd imagine. He's going to try to send it down in there, but he's not going to get the slide job done easily on Gilliard if he's going to do that. Yeah, to get that slide job done, you really have to clear them in the middle of the turn. Because uh, that's where the momentum of the top side is going to kick in uh, and start giving that outside lane the power off the turn. So um, if you see it in real life, uh, that's kind of what you got to going to have to do. Uh, get, drive it in as deep and as hard as you see that uh, Greg Holt is doing here into turn one. He drives it in so deep into uh, turn one and to turn three. And then he's just going to try and clear him just enough. Uh, so he can get that rear end right in front of the nose of the 33 machine, but just not able to do it as uh, Gilliard is able to maintain his momentum right now on that outside. So just making it tough on him, and it is hard to pass here like that, but uh, uh, I mean, Greg Holt's been making up some spots, so he knows how to do it. Kyle Lingerfeld has worked his way past Fair and Elam Jr. and into the eighth position is the 65 of Lingerfeld looking his way forward at the 81 of Max Service. That is... For seventh position now, if you look forward here, service and Lingerfeld going at it. And here comes Holt once again on Gilliard. Yeah, he got a big exit off of uh, two that time. And you can see there in the middle of the turn, he clears him, can put the that uh, rear end up in front. Gilliard's going to get a little bit of help. Actually, not too much. It looks like he may have gotten a little bit of loose uh, rear end coming around on him off the turn. So that gives plenty of room to uh, Greg Holt. He's up into the top five now. So Greg Holt now sets his sights on point leader and teammate Joseph Kiazzi, who is a little ways up the road right there. We'll look at the gap right here up ahead. 1.2 seconds is the gap to Joseph Kiazzi and is the catch in pass Kiazzi. He wants to begin the long journey to try to get back atop the point standings over his teammate. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's catching them quite a bit here. He's already knocked off quite a bit of time. Um, Greg Holt, very good on the long runs. We've seen that all season long. Again, again he looks really good on the long run here. Uh, you know, we mentioned in the top of the broadcast that uh, Seth Berger and Joseph Causey happen to be running both orange and green schemes. And when you know it, they're right in front of each other, right, uh, you know, nose to tail right now in third and fourth. So, you know, it's interesting how these things work out. But uh, he's got to pass uh, Greg Holt does uh, both of those orange and green machines. So we'll see if he can get it done. He's catching them quite rapidly. As Max gets loose out of turn number two, Kyle Lingerfeld will take over the, ra uh, the seventh position here in race. At lap 47 of 157, Kyle Lingerfeld now looking his way forward to see if he can work his way into the top five prior to the end of stage number two, which will be again scored at the completion of lap 72. Landon Lacey, the leader, and he's got seven tenths to Brad Boffwell, and it's kind of stayed stagnant there. Boffwell not really fading to the 53 of Lacey. No, he's not. I mean, we've mentioned this uh, pretty much all season long. You can hear how long out of the throttle uh, Lacey is. He's not shifting down at all. He's staying in fourth gear. Uh, but you can hear how long he's out of the throttle. Out of the throttle well before the turn in. I mean, for most of the turn, he's out of the throttle. So just trying to save uh, tires here, trying to baby this truck around. It's probably starting to get a little tight. So you got to get it to turn down and not use up that right front. And yeah, he's uh, definitely off the throttle a very long time. Ooh, a little bit low exit there. Not sure if that was by design, but I assume not. He lost about a tenth down that straightaway. So maybe just a little moment for the our leader here, but... Yeah, very interesting. Uh, we have uh, two different strategies here between that 53 and the 3 truck already. And uh, we have another stop truck on the racetrack. That is Joshua Gaffright on uh, turn number four. I think that's the second time today this 27 has uh, been a highlight reel out of a corner today. Yeah, he... Um... Oh yeah, he was. It was uh, turn two was the first time it got him, and now turn four. Turn four is a little more perilous, a lot more narrow than uh, turn two. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. He is behind Fitzpatrick this time in the head of Devin Smith, as they will sail off into the corner here, and you might Dennis. have a caution on the speedway here so this might be something oh oh all three trucks and wow yeah. oh seth Fitzpatrick got down there too i think gathray got got loose and uh just tried to correct it and it just went right into uh the two truck and uh devin smith there in the 95. well caution will definitely come my caution is now out on the speedway i want to get a look at this overhead I can try to decipher what exactly happened here and who did what. So you see Gaffright coming down to defend against Smith. If it goes up high to try to make the overtake. A four. Y'all just kind of get tight. Oh, just, on one uh, yeah, just yeah, just getting tight there. Maybe, uh, maybe he heard clear from the spotter and tried to come up but uh, the 95 just had the speed off of the turn running that high line just uh, was not you know he was not clear so uh, that happens from time to time if you're using the iRacing spotters uh, uh, not always are they you know to the most accurate but uh, yeah definitely was uh, it looked like he just tried to come up thinking he was clear and it just was not clear but we have pit stops here Yes, indeed. We'll get live pit stops here in the middle of stage number two. Stage one winner, Landon Lacey, brings the field down the pit lane. And we'll see if there's any strategy being played here. Brandon Richardson stays out. Uh, I'd imagine this is more or less a ploy to get a lap led and not him actually trying to stay out. But we will see as the field gets uh, squared away in turn number one. Down and away is a slew of trucks. Lacey beats Boffwell, and then it is Berger, Kazi, Holt, and Friends. Actually, uh, 
Service is going to lose out a lot of spots there. Service all the way back to AF, the AF truck off the pit lane. And we'll see what Brandon Richardson does here. As we'll await him to work his way through turn four. And Richardson will... I'm going to stay out one more lap. It looks like this is a ploy just to get that lap led because you can't get that lap led. It doesn't look like. Uh, when trucks are on pit road, Lacey was still getting the lap lead. So this will give Richardson, uh, Richardson that, that lap lead. And then he'll probably dive in next time around like the, uh, like we saw the six truck do earlier. Well, Lacey is dropping down the running order. I, my guess is oh, I think he's no. bad. Oh no. We'll have to get some clarification if it was a speeding or if, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, another pit road uh, penalty, uh, definitely a pit road penalty. We'll just have to get clarification on what pit road penalty that was, uh, whether it was uh, iRacing given or admin given. Um, as uh, some of your viewers, if you haven't been watching uh, previous races, uh, Outlaw Sim Series does abide by running to the furthest lane away from the pit boxes down pit road until you turn into your pit box, uh, kind of like they do in real life NASCAR. So uh, and here it's running all the way to the right of the pit lane. We're going to see that as, uh, yeah, you can see there as um, Richardson dives in, stays all the way to the right up against that inside wall. And then once you get to your pit box, you can turn in. And then the same thing coming off. Got to stay all the way to the right, uh, make as much room as possible. Of course, you have a truck on your outside coming off, then, you know, just stay where you can. Ooh, a late choice there by the 42. But, uh, yeah, definitely a penalty. He's all the way back at the end of the longest line. Well, 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 how the turns have tabled the most dominant truck thus far. Winning stage one is uh, sent to the back. But that being said, he's got a, himself a fast truck, a fast piece of machine. Should be relatively easy for him to get up here. But so hard to pass here. He's going to have to be patient and not wear all his stuff trying to get back up here. Yeah, we've seen how that 53 truck is uh, out in front in clean air. Now he's going to be back in the pack. Uh, we'll have to see how that truck is in uh, in traffic. I imagine it'll still be pretty quick, but how quick, we just don't know. Pace toward light should go off this time around. Um, we'll have one to go here. Uh, Brad Bothwell back on the top point. Yeah, Brad Bothwell back to the race lead. Um, after starting on the pole, he didn't get to lead a single lap. He's now led laps under caution, but will he lead a green flag lap will be the next question. He's got Seth Berger to his outside. Joseph Kelsey and Greg Holt run number two. Max Service, Kyle Lingerfeld run number three. James Gilliard, Farron Eliam run number four. Jeremiah Stutzman and Matthew Setzer of a top ten. A field now works their way out of turn number two. Doubled up several rows deep. A couple of drivers have decided to take the rest of the night off. And the 48 of Garrett Velzi is out of the session 37 laps down Andrew Schroeder of his heavy damage he is out 16 laps down in 27th and uh, John Mushtian Jr. is three laps down after missing the initial start of the race so the field in the hands of Brad Buffwell as they come off of turn number four viracing.com safety vehicle We'll find it safety in the pit lane, and we are green once again from New Hampshire. Oh, and around goes Joseph Cosby in the middle of the field. Oh, I'm not sure what happened there. I'm not sure if Cosby made contact with the. And he's got seven. engine damage. Yeah, it looks like he got hit in the front end too. Oh no, our points leader. Greg Holt talked about it in the opening. One bad, one bad decision, one bad turn, and it can all go wrong. And it looks like it has all gone wrong for that AR points leader, the 88 truck of Joseph Causey. And what happened here, this, I think this might be all solo as well. Self-inflicted potentially. We'll watch the restart here. The green flag comes out. Buffalo clears up high, and... In the turn one, Kazi sends it on in there, and uh, that, oh wow, who does he get hit by? Oh, Matthew sets her nowhere to go. Yeah, that almost took out Greg Holt too. His teammate right behind him, 
uh, Causey just slid up, and luckily the three truck was able to avoid him, but uh, nowhere for Matthew Setzer to go. And, uh, man, that's big-time damage on the 88. I can only imagine what that five truck has right now. But, yeah, just trying to drive it in as deep as he could, try and get around that 77 on new tires, and it just did not work. And uh, speaking of Brad Bothwell, I mean, he got a great restart that time, a lot better than the start of the race, but man, you got to feel for a points leader. Well, Brad Bothwell is on the pit lane right now, and there was no caution for that Causey incident. Is this a penalty for Bothwell potentially changing lanes before the start-finish line? He did. He did change lanes before the start-finish line. I didn't notice that until you just said it. Oh, my goodness, what a heartbreak. I wonder if that's exactly what race control has called him for. More than likely, that is what happened. And Seth Berger is your race leader here at New Hampshire. And everything has flipped, turned upside down. Greg Holt now has the power play in his hands to potentially regain the point lead all in one race. Yeah, and I mean, you got two teammates in one and two right now. I mean, Seth Berger is leading. Max Service, his teammate, in second place. A big time recovery. We last time we saw Max, he was in eighth. Uh, he got around that incident of at the start at the restart there with the 88 truck, but uh, definitely made up some positions. 33 truck right behind him is not to slouch, so he's gonna have to put on, you know, see how good that 81 truck is, and of course back uh, just a little bit further down the road, not much. Uh, that three truck of Greg Holt always lurking. And just confirmed by race control, just as we sus suspected, the 31 of Brad Bothwell was posted for changing lanes before the restart. I'm sorry, before the start finish line on the restart. And huge. Brad Bothwell, who qualified on pole, had a legitimate chance to win this race. Joseph Causey, the point leader, had a legitimate dog in this fight, especially after Lacey had a pit road penalty. This race has taken such an intriguing turn, and James Gillier trying to put himself in second. Yeah, big time block there by the 81. Not going to make it easy for the 33. 33 going to try again as we get into turn one and two. Uh, Lacey already up to 14th. He's making his way up slowly, but um, yeah, man, that hurts the 31 truck. It was kind of gifted to him, and then a self inflicted mistake. 33 truck, though, looking. He's there inside of the 81. Trying to get in there. Gilliard has the advantage at the center of the corner, but can Max get the run off? He does. They're going to go side by side down the front straight, and Greg Holt wants a piece of this as well. Yeah, well, this is pulling Greg Holt into the picture. It's also allowing Seth Berger to kind of skip his way down the road. Uh, these trucks being side by side. Oh, 33, a little loose off of turn two. They ran side by side for almost an entire lap. Now an entire lap. In the three and four again, the 33 truck drives it in. Can he clear him? Trying to. He's clear at the moment. Max sideways. He was trying to get the crossover. The truck snapped loose on him. He's able to save the truck, but Max service now into the clutches of Greg Holt. who will send it to the inside of Max. And then remember... Stage points are going to be awarded at the completion of lap 72. Slow truck on the front straightaway is the 32 of Jeremy C. Poole. Poole will get back up to speed in this number 32 truck. And we continue on. It's Gilliard up to second. Now Greg Holt trying to clear service. Can't get there. Service putting up in a very good defense here. Trying to stay as high as he can and keep a hold of these podium positions. Greg Holt, though, sends it in to turn one very, very deep. He's not cleared yet, though. The 81 fights back on the outside as they come off with two. And that's what I was talking about in the pre-race. You can really defend up as you can run both lanes here if you wanted to, but Holt will send it in to turn three. He'll try to clear up in front of Max Service right here, and he shall do so easily. I think Max learned from the last time that crossing over that late in the corner with his truck set up the way it is will not be that good. Here comes Holt trying to take second from Gilliard. Yeah, Greg Holt not done yet. He saw his big competition for the points lead be uh, given. I think uh, Causey might be done. He's definitely in pit rain, uh, 10 laps down. So he is trying to make up as much points as he can 
this is his chance to get back in this points race for the regular season title. But uh, he falls back a little bit. Uh, ooh, the 81 truck still loose off of four, though. And uh, he might lose fourth now. So Kyle Lingerfeld sends on in there. He will now try to take over that fourth position from Max Service. Service dropping down the running order quickly. And then waiting laps of stage number two. Side by side down the back straight away. Lingerfeld trying to take the spot in the turn three. And it's been all about that bottom side. Working that bottom side to make these overtakes. I think Service could push a little bit harder on that outside lane. But doesn't want to wear out his stuff early. Even though stage two is coming to completion here. There's still a lot of green flag racing left. Because there's no caution that's going to come out for stage number two. Only if there was an incident on the track that warranted a caution would one come out. And Daniel Park has just powered his way into the top ten with two and a half laps to go in stage number two. Yeah, good run here. He's got Landon Lacey behind him, though. He's going to have to hang on to that position for a couple of laps. I mean, the 53 truck, he was out front. He's made his way back uh, to 11th. Uh, now he's... Trying to set his sights to get some more bonus points, uh, even though they won't really help him in the playoffs since he can't make them. But still trying to get himself into the top 10 before the stage closes out again under natural flag conditions. So, but yeah, I mean, great run from that sixth truck in Daniel Park up into the top 10 at the moment. He's only got one more lap to keep it, though. He can get some point, uh, a nice uh, bonus point right here. Yeah, Daniel Park, he's got a lap and a half to hold on to what he's got. And it's getting tight here. Holt will send it on Gilead. This is for second on the final lap of stage two. Gilead's not done, though. He fights hard on the outside, side by side, down the back straightaway. Holt has the advantage at a turn number two. Gilead trying to hang tough on the outside, but Holt will send it down into turn three to try to clear up in front of James Gilead. But off a of turn number four, it'll be last season champion Seth Berger winning stage number two over Greg Holt, James Gilliard, Kyle Lingerfeld, Max Service, Theron Elam Jr., just over Jeremiah Stutzman, Joshua Fox, Nephew Sensor, and Daniel Park will get a stage point. Yeah, Daniel Park able to hold off Lacey, but for how much longer now we're going to move into stage number three? This is for the win now. We're in the final stage of this race. 42 truck, uh, is he a lap down there? No, he's recovered. So we saw the 42 truck uh, spinning around earlier in this race. He's managed to get some of that damage repaired uh, and get back up into the 12th position. Not a uh, bad recovery. Or is that 13th? I'm sorry. But not a bad recovery there for the 42. Jesse Adams just ahead of him down the road in that 55 machine in 12th. Uh, and then also the two truck. Yeah, Fitzpatrick and Tyler Markle making some great recovery runs late. And Daniel Park has just gone up to ninth on Matthew Setzer. Daniel Park having a stellar run right now. Lacey trying to follow Daniel Park forward. Yeah, Park uh, just trying to find that truck. Maybe found something here on that last stop. Maybe a, a final tweak of that setup has really set that truck up for success. Um Kind of figuring it out uh, as he goes. Well, it didn't look too good early in the run, but again, you can make setup changes. Oh, the 53 and the 5 make contact off of 2. Well, hold on to it. Lacey will file his way up into 10th. Setzer outside the top 10. Now into 11th is Matthew Setzer. And the uh, closest battle on track now is Stutzman, who's trying to work his way past the 66 of Joshua Fox. This is fourth position. Elam trying not to run over to 71, though, on corner entry. Yeah, these trucks all nose to tell right here. Ooh, looks like Elam's truck a little bit upset off of turn two. Calamity corner there. But uh, able to hang on to it. I don't think he touched anything, but he just loses a little bit of ground to Stutzman in front of him. Uh, making a comeback. Oh, he's really high off of four. Manages to keep it out of the wall as the 98, but man, that was that was close there. Very close indeed. And as far as uh, the battles, they have uh, somewhat dissipated here, and we're coming up to the half. We have just now eclipsed the halfway point here at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And that being said, we're going to take a step aside here. We're going to go side by side here from Loudon, New Hampshire. You're not going to miss anything. We'll be right back.
Have you found yourself trying to hide your joy because you're unhappy with your teeth? Your smile is the first feature noticed in an interview, on a date, or in family photos. We want you to be able to shine bright as your best self, and our teeth whitening system is the perfect step toward restoring your confidence. Sound art is a product that is a speaker and it's art. We combine it together and we call it sound art. What makes it so unique that any picture can be your speaker? Sound art gives you the high quality sound without the ugly speaker. This isn't a picture with the speaker, the picture is the speaker. Just imagine your wedding picture uh, uploaded onto a canvas and now it's speaking 10,000 tunes. I mean, it's a very cool concept. What we like so much about it that you can take anything that means something very special to you, upload it on the canvas, have it hanging up in your room, your balcony, wherever you want to put it, and now it's a speaker. I mean, how cool is that? It's, it's, it's something that we have that, and no one has. No one has this product. It's just a great gift to give anybody. It's just a neat concept. Around here we say, art never sounded so good. After months of quarantine, we're all interested in how we can become our best self. The team at Permanent Makeup and Cryo is here to help you get the flawless makeup look every day without the extra effort or time. When it comes to your appearance, you deserve the best care that money can buy. Sound Art introduces an entirely new way to listen to music in your home. By combining the best of two products, a revolutionary high fidelity, low profile Bluetooth wireless speaker with beautiful artwork. Select from a library of artwork or upload your own photos to personalize your experience. Sound art ushers in an era of invisible, beautiful, and amazing sound throughout your home and redefines your entire entertainment system. The need to reclaim your floor space and rid your home of unsightly speaker boxes that need to be bolted to the wall is now a thing of the past. Our canvas is printed on high-quality permalite by breathing color. And select from our gallery or upload your own. Standard sizes include 16 by 20 and 18 by 24 canvas wrapped. Custom sizing is available, as well as surround sound options. Welcome, race fans, back to the virtual Loudon, New Hampshire. We're here at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway for race number 10 of 22 here at the Outlaws Sim Series. Seth Berger, the race leader, you saw there on our side-by-side -side that he had to deal with some lap traffic. And uh, Greg Holt is a coming. Less than a second now is the gap between himself and Greg Holt. I want to give a quick shout-out to all the partners here at Pit Stop TV. And you heard from a few of them there in our side-by-side, -side, like Tucson Sound Art, your picture your music. Use promo code Pitstop TV at checkout and receive 10% off of your wall mounted sound art device today. Ever wish you could have a race engineer on speed dial? Well, now you can thanks to Race Pace, a driver development service and setup shop all in one. Work with Tyler, a real world race engineer, to step up your game before your next race. Pick up pace with Race Pace. When it comes to your appearance, you deserve the best care that money can buy. You can contact Permanent Makeup and Cryo and Maine. 
at paranormalmakeupinmaine.com. You can call or text them at 207-358-8683. Whiplash Media specializes in various sim racing resources, including paint schemes, stream overlays, iRacing, camera packs, and more. The official graphic and camera provider of Pitstop TV, and you can grab your iBroadcast cameras today at www.pitstoptv.com. And of course, BAM Racing videos by our race hand for a racing community. Like them on Facebook. Check them out. And Devin, we're here into the second half of this race. We haven't really had to think about strategy too much, and I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. I think it's going to be an easy one stop from here, from when we took the green to the end of this race. But what is shaping up here is a battle for the lead and against a couple of drivers who have a little bit of history of one another. Uh, think back to Rockingham. This could get very intriguing up here. Yeah, Rockingham and Auto Club, these two came together. Um, yeah, it could get very interesting. I mean, this is for the lead, two fighting teams. Um, uh, the Swift, uh, was it not Swift? Uh, oh, yeah, it is. Is it Swift? I can't remember. <laughs> but, but, yeah, Seth Berger, Max Service here uh, on this one team. And then Greg Holt and Joseph Causey. And uh, so Jason Miz, Jeremiah Sessman kind of affiliated with Performance Sim Sports on the other team. Uh, they've kind of been the, the leaders all season between these two teams, fighting it out, having some great battles. And uh, it looks like another one is kind of shaping up again. Uh, three Truck was catching quite rapidly there for a while while we were on break. Uh, then we hit some lap traffic, and uh, we thought it was going to slow up the 77 a lot more than it did. He was able to navigate it pretty well. Uh, but that uh, three truck kind of had some trouble with it, and uh, it's kind of fallen and not fallen off, but stabilized uh, kind of where that three truck is behind the 77. He kind of hasn't made up any ground uh, since clearing that lap traffic. So I'm not sure if he used this stuff up a little bit trying to get around there or just trying to catch Seth Berger. But uh, yeah, he's kind of stabilized there about uh, seven tenths of a second back. It looks like we've had somebody fall out of session. Landon Lacey, but this is a driver who has uh, either left or have has fallen out of the session due to internet issues. Driver's on the pit lane, Randall Barnett. Uh, and we have Adam Gardner, who's down in the pit lane. Joseph Kazi, you saw on the side-by-side, -side, he is back out on the track, severely off the pace. But you know what, he's, he's, he's logging laps. He's trying to keep himself alive in his battle for the regular season championship. Yeah, and right now all those points matter. So however many positions you can pick up, I mean, he's 25 laps down. He could catch a couple of guys who we've seen um, have dropped out of the session. So he can make up a couple spots here. And, you know, I mean, every point is valuable. And especially with you got uh, your primary competition, Greg Holt, trying to go for the lead here. Um, he's going to need all the points he can get. Oh, that, that just sounds so depressing on Cheryl. Let's run on board with Greg Holt. So you can hear the difference. Kazi only got to 130 miles per hour on the straightaway. Greg Holt, who's trying to go for the race lead, is going sideways out of turn four. And that is something that can happen with you shifting down. Um, it puts all that power, shifts the load to those rear wheels. And if they do not, if they're getting slippery, uh, it could just spin them. Oh, oh. boy. It's Lingerfelt for trying to go yeah, at it for Lingerfeld second. for third here. This is, or for second. Yeah, Lingerfelt's caught him. But, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're shifting down and uh, those back tires light up and just spin, uh, that is exactly what can happen. The truck just turns on you. And that is definitely what happened there for the three truck. But it's put him in the clutches of Kyle Lingerfelt. And you know what? That might be what Seth needed, even though Holt might be fast enough to close the gap right back up to Seth. I think Seth understands that he all he has to do now is relax. Even though it's only a two-second lead, and that's not relaxing by any means when you have a performance sim sport driver behind you. But he knows that he doesn't have to push his stuff. Holt is pushing his stuff, trying to catch him. And, and Seth can just kind of take it easy, make it to that one pit stop that I'm most likely thinking these drivers are going to have to make between now and the end of the race, make it to the end, and... I think maybe from there. As far as uh, Holt's case, trying to catch up to Seth Bergevere, of course, you know, clean air is king, especially at a track that it's so hard to overtake. But, man, look at what it's done to him now. He's now having to fend off a driver for a second instead of going at it for the race lead. Yeah, I mean, Lingerfeld just kind of been hanging back here. Not really. Oh, he's loose now. 
uh, out of four, but yeah, he was just kind of hanging back here a couple of seconds off of that battle for the lead that was kind of shaping up. Um, and now he's up here trying to fight for it. Doesn't look like he's putting a whole lot of pressure on Holt at the moment. Um, maybe he thinks that Holt's just going to burn his stuff up since he's kind of sliding around those rear tires a lot. So maybe just taking it easy, seeing if the three truck makes another mistake and then he can capitalize on it. But, um, I mean, he's right there just in case he does. But uh, that 65 sliding around pretty good now, too. So there's two spots for Joseph Kazi to come out and grab. Uh, John Mustine Jr. and Landon Lacey has now fallen out of the session. Greg Holt, we got uh, third in that second stage. And Kazi not getting stage points brings that point lead, which was about 32, bring it down to about 24. Well, Kazi's running at about, well, 24th. So, this is getting very tight. We're talking about points. If Holt even finishes second, it might be like one or two points between the top two leaving tonight's race. Yeah, and then it just heats it up going into Pocono, uh, where anything could happen there. I mean, it's a, it's a 2.5 tricky triangle. All three turns different. Uh, Look at this pack. Whoa. This is all for position. Yeah, the five truck was really loose, giving plenty of room. But we have five truck or four trucks battling for position. Oh, almost it's four wide. Nearly four, almost three wide there off a of turn two. This is all for position. Everybody on the same age tires. Boffo trying to take it to the inside of Devin Smith in the turn three. Richardson trying to hang to three wide for the 13th position. You can do that here, but it does get kind of tight off oh. the turns. Oh, big slide by, oh, big slide, but able to make it work here, Devin Smith. But, yeah, Bothwell sent it in in turn three, and uh, luckily New Hampshire is very, very wide, seven lanes. Uh, so you can fit seven trucks side by side here. I'm not sure if you want to do that. 95 truck a little loose there in the middle. <laughs> they were three wide again. But, uh, yeah, very wide, luckily for these guys. Big show putting on by these drivers. Bothwell trying to make his way back through the field, of course, after that penalty. Um, he was in the lead and uh, changed lanes coming to the start-finish line before the start-finish line on the restart and uh, had to serve a drive through penalty. Yeah, that was a very uh, unfortunate situation there for Brad Bothwell, but trying to make the most of it now as he works his way up into 12. Oh, my! Nearly making contact there with Setzer Smith trying to come back. Gaffright is also for a position behind. Joseph Kazi, few several laps off the pace trying to keep himself alive in this battle for the championship lead. So many things going on. and it, Devin Smith's truck is destroyed and is in 13th place. How about it? Hanging on in front of a what looks like a much cleaner truck right behind him. Yeah, he's definitely hanging on quite well. I mean, that truck is sliding quite a, quite a bit off of turn four. Uh, turn two, he looked a little bit better. Ooh, I think the five truck got the wall there. Off oh, of turn man. Two. Yeah, he slowed down the back stretch. He got the wall. And Ooh, now going tight, at it with Gaff, right? Man, oh man. Richardson's coming down the pit lane. This might be time for pit stop. truck in the wall again. Oh no. Big impact for Matthew Setzer. And remember, this is the truck that made contact with Joseph Kazi. Didn't even bring out a caution. But Kazi sent it in on, a green, on, on the most recent restart of this race about 50 laps ago. We've ran all green since. Joseph Kazi had to repair engine damage. Matthew Setzer might not be in the best of shape engine-wise as well. Everybody trying to hang on here. Setzer's doing a phenomenal job at that to be involved in an incident like that and still he be is, on the lead lap. He is struggling big time off of each and every turn. Right now, turn two, turn four. He's almost making contact with the wall. That truck just not turning off the turns very tight um greg holt kind of stuck about a half or a second and a half back from seth Berger. it's kind of been right there for a while now seth Berger, like you said he kind of needs just need to relax now and drive his race save his tires pit when he wants to pit uh looks like we had a couple of early takers on the pit stop um i'm not sure how much longer these guys want to go you can Make it a one stop, so we'll just have to see how long they want to go. But uh, definitely some great racing here all around the track, even though 
you know, it looks like they're all spread out. There are some like mini battles throughout the track. Some guys kind of close here. Uh, the 33 and the 81, 81 uh, got passed by the 33 earlier. Now the 81's caught back up. Uh, trying to get back into fourth place uh, is that 81 truck. Also, Joshua Fox, uh, we saw him fall back a little bit. Now he's caught back up to these two, trying to make up some positions and put himself in the top five. Yeah, as far as uh, the pitch strategy, we're now at 50 laps. Or next time by the start finish line, it'll be 50 laps remaining in the race. And the restart happened about 50 laps into the race. So we're looking at it here. We're swimming this race in about thirds from that pit stop to the end of the race that half the race or half, half that sit is 50 laps i'm expecting a lot of these drivers to make their way down the pit lane here as kyle lingerfell is looking to power his way by greg holt yeah holt got loose he, he went into the turn got high got loose uh, lingerfell has something on the bumper there that was not there before his bumpers dented in i'm not sure what happened there but um yeah, uh, Holt drove it in pretty hard on the high side, and the truck just did not turn. So he had to back down out of it, and uh, Lingerfeld able to get that position. He's up to second now. What a great drive from Kyle Lingerfeld. I'm not entirely sure it's how it works, but if he got hit in the rear end there, which he most definitely, it looks like he has. It looks like there's a bite mark out of that rear end. A tight truck might be made loose because of that. It might be helping Lingerfeld more than anything. <laughs> Well, if we see how his truck turns, it's turning down off the turns very well. It seems like other trucks are struggling, so you might be right. Uh -oh. It might be just helping him out. Oh, oh Max service no, Max Service has had trouble off of turn number four. A that's championship contender last season in trouble. Yeah. Man, we, that's not the first time he's uh, made acquaintance with that wall off of four. Let's see what happened here on the replay. So Max Service is going here into turn three. He's right ahead of the 66 of Josh Fox. There's a slow truck, and he'll just get loose on the bottom side of the racetrack. There's not a lot of grip down there. There's a little different asphalt down there, more uh, newer asphalt that doesn't really agree with the truck as it came off the corner. Very light corner exit. Max Service went around. No damage, though. We'll grab a gear and get back going. Yeah, luckily there's no damage, but he did lose quite a number of spots. He's going to have to make those up somehow. Uh, I imagine he's going to try and get the pit road as quick as possible. They are in the window, so get down there, get your tires. Uh, you lit them up quite well, so I imagine he needs to come down soon. He doesn't come down this time, but I don't imagine it'll be too much longer. Surely it can't be. Uh, we're at the point now where I think a lot of people are. Uh, hey, Greg, Holt, Greg Holt's pitted. Ah, uh, here we go. The short pit, potentially. For of a race win tonight. Is this going to be of a race winning strategy? We will see. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see. Greg Holt, uh, the last time this kind of came down, he he uh, went long and was able to run uh, the guys down in front of him and take the lead, win the race. Um, but, yeah, he uh, – or I don't know if he won that race. He maybe got sacked. No, he did win that race. But, um, yeah, the last time that happened, he uh, – you know, went a little bit longer than everyone and uh, was able to come down and get uh, tires and then ended up winning that race. I'm not sure who that is behind him. I'm not sure if they oh, just cause he's going slow on the inside, but uh, letting people by. But uh, there's our race leader still yet to pit. He's going to have to come down soon to cover this off, I would imagine. Um, we'll see what happens this time around. He, the five truck gets by. The five truck's already been in. And Seth will stay out again. Yep, staying out again. Uh, Kyle Lingerfeld also staying out again, and he's kind of chipped into the 77's lead. Yeah, Lingerfeld, he's really got something here on the long run. Lingerfeld is not somebody you want to count out yet uh, by any means, especially because Finks could still get feisty between the, uh, well, the predicted top two. Tyler Barkle has also now stayed out to this extent. Max Service and Stutzman still out there, as well as Fox has hit the pit lane. And you'll park has hit the pit lane and more. Yeah, maybe the maybe these top guys are just like I'm gonna run it dry and uh, then try to get back at the end of the race on much fresher tires. Um, not sure how much that's gonna work for him here, but we'll have to see. Uh, I'm not sure what lap times um, that three truck is running at the moment. 
Yeah, not entirely sure. Uh, we'll see Greg Holt. He's running 30.6s to Seth Burgess 32.0. So a second and a half, which if that's a lap, that has already been long cleared. And uh, Greg Holt should easily cycle out to be the race leader at the current rate. But Seth Burgess will have the fresher tires at the end of the race. We'll see how this all works out. We saw Holt couldn't really find a way around Seth. I intriguing strategy here. Maybe Seth hoping for a yellow at this point. Uh, possibly, but, uh, you know, maybe thinking that those fresher tires are going to let him get by relatively easy. Um, let's see about this time by still staying out. So, uh, we'll see what happens, but I mean, yeah, you could definitely, um, you know, on fresher tires, probably try to get that move done relatively easily, but you do need to leave yourself enough flaps to get it done. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing now. He's getting off turn two pretty well, but. Uh, there are trucks here, another truck behind them there. I can't really tell who that is, but uh, much fresher tires. You see the closing rate. Um, they're on fresh tires as opposed to old tires. It, it's quite remarkable. Yeah, but this is not for position. This is whole unlapping himself to Seth Berger, and this is huge. I'd imagine Seth now has to be looking at coming in soon more than anything. He might, it might be time to uh, abandon ship. On whatever he's trying to do, because I don't see how it's going to be working out here. Yeah, about 40 laps to go now. I think this is the time you need to get it done. It looks like he's slowing down this time. Yeah, he's coming in. The so Seth Berger will hit the pit lane and try to make something happen here on yeah, his strategy. Big, big, yeah, and the big thing here is don't do any self-inflicted wounds. Take it easy. Make a good pit stop. Don't slide through the box. Stay close to that right side wall turn, and when you get to your pit sign, let the pit guys do the work, get off easy, and um, yeah, then go to work and try and chase down this three truck, which we're assuming is going to inherit the lead here. Uh, Marco did stay out, and Jeremiah Stutzman stayed out for an extra lap here. So Greg Holt, not the race leader as of yet. He has cycled up to third, though. You can see him. Man, that's going to be a lot of time to make up there for that 77 truck. Yeah, absolutely. Don't know how this is all going to work out. James Gilliard is not going to be four position in between Holt and Seth Berger. And Gilliard's on 10 lap older tires. Be intriguing to see how it all works out. It's Tyler Markle and Jeremiah Stutzman are still out there. Stutzman on the pit lane. Markle's still out here. Yeah, Markle getting some laps led now. Trying to get some bonus points for this playoff run. And he is in fourth in the playoff picture at the moment. Uh, that six truck behind him, Daniel Park, and again, having a great run. He's sitting there in ninth trying to unlap himself. Brad Bothwell right behind him in 10th, also trying to unlap himself. Uh, it looks like they're going to get that done relatively easily. Uh, Seth Berger has cleared James Gilliard, it looks like, and now he sets his sights on Greg Holt. He's about four seconds behind right now, uh, Greg Holt, and he's going to have some work to do. There's some trucks between them. Yeah, a couple lap vehicles. Berger will make easy work of... Georgia native Kevin Thompson. And now uh, there's one lap truck in between. That is a uh, teammate to Greg Holt, by the way. That is Joshua Gaffrey, the truck in between Berger and Holt. Yeah, I don't imagine being a lap down. You can put up much of a fight to a lead lap truck. But uh, we'll see what happens there. It's always interesting when you pass a teammate of the guy you're trying to catch. Um, they can make it hard. Or, you know, they can make it easy. They can make it hard on you. You just never know. Um, being that sets on much fresher tires, uh, we'll have to see what happens. But um, he's trying to chip in here to Greg Holt. Um, he hasn't really chipped in much, though, over the last couple of laps. So maybe a stroke of brilliance here from that three truck. We'll have to see how quickly his tires fall off and how much longer the 77s can hold on. But uh, this might be a stroke of brilliance here from that three truck. So you see the gap. The gap has closed down to 3.5 seconds, but it's not closing at an alarming rate. Plus, catching and passing Greg Holt are two completely different things. Yeah, and of course, we talked about it before when Holt was trying to catch the 77 for the lead. Um, there is a little bit of history between these two drivers. So once if that does happen where he does catch him, Seth Berger, that is catching Greg Holt. Uh, it could see some fireworks here because it will be for the win. Again, Tyler Marco has not fitted. He uh, is in the race lead right now, but uh, as they when they do cycle around, it will be Greg Holt who will assume the race lead. 
uh, the race near before pit stop started. Oh, there's a wreck. And I believe that was Seth Berger involved. Oh, no. Seth Berger is slow. They're off of turn number two. We'll have to try to see what happened. And is this caution? Uh, oh, it was Gathright. It, Gathright pinning him down. It, Teammates. It, it absolutely was. Gathright and Berger getting at it. And I'm going to be straight up honest. This series has had a lot of Joshua Gathright here. We'll see what happens here in the turn number one. Seth, oh, that, just Seth's him off. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, it, it looked like both trucks just came together. I'm not sure. It looks like Gathright came down. Seth Berger came up at the same time. I mean, uh, it's the lap truck. I don't know, man. I I, I don't necessarily uh, know either. I want to get a uh, another. Yeah, he, pin he pinched him there off of four. He, he stayed did. down and kept him down. So definitely battling him, you know, trying to let Greg Holt get away. Absolutely. So, uh, that That's definitely clear, I believe. So. The teammate game going into effect here. Yeah, you can see he turns in. The 77's there. Yeah, Seth's yeah, he trying turned to... in. Seth's trying to back off there, and then when you back off, you just the truck goes straight. But yeah, the, the 27 turned in early into the turn, and Seth was there. Uh, that that is that that is uh something I I'm gonna have to agree with there. I want to see if there's a little bit more to this battle. We're gonna watch a little bit. A ways back here. We're gonna go on board with the 77 of Seth Berger here. So we can see what happened here through three and four. And look at how hard he's being pinched down by Gaff right off of four. Oh yeah, my he goodness. Pinched he pinched him big time off of four. Seth gets uh he, he's cleared now, Gaff right is. He turns in, but it, I mean yeah, Seth was Seth was there. You know in fresher tires he's gonna be driving it a little bit harder. He's in the inside of you. Yeah, I mean, as a lap down truck, I mean, I know you're trying to fight for your teammate, but you can't, you can't chop a guy's nose off like that, especially, especially being a lap down. I mean, oh man, that's going to hurt the 77 quite a bit. And that helps Tyler Markle. Tyler Markle was still out on the track, so he will be the race leader. Right, that very true indeed. And we've ran such a long run at that point that, you know, most, mostly everybody's going to come on down and grab some fresh tires. So Tyler Markle is the race leader. Kyle Linger felt second. Greg Holt has now come out in the third position. Seth Berger is fourth, but I'd imagine he'll be getting EOL'd for that incident. And Brad Bothwell, James Gilliard, the trucks behind them. Bothwell dropping backwards. Did he speed? I'm not sure. It looks like uh, the 77 let one truck by. 31, I'm not sure what he's doing is he letting trucks by uh, he's speeding up now it, it, it might have just been an early call there maybe gilly which is supposed to be out of both of them but seth is getting ready to let trucks by here that must have no, both was letting people by too uh what is happening <laughs> i don't quite know there is no clear direction going on here by uh by any of these drivers they're all just kind of hovering behind one another nobody i don't think is making any clear communication between the drivers and uh yeah, very intriguing indeed. We have a. Uh... Uh, is the forty-two truck dropping back now too, or no? He's just. Oh, the, the, he, the guy be... stay out. No, but he's behind lap trucks. Oh, lap trucks. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I don't have my scoring screen tonight, so I'm not able to see uh, my scoring like I normally am, uh, unfortunately. But uh, so I'm trying to go off of the video here that is on the screen that everybody is watching. Uh, just uh, computer stuff not cooperating with me tonight. So, uh, unfortunately, there. So, if uh, I missed that, I was I am sorry. But uh, yeah, forty two truck, forty two truck will be the race leader. I think they're still trying to figure out what's going on with the seventy seven truck, though. Yeah, not entirely sure. Now I think Seth Berger's officially gotten DOL here. Um, yeah, he's he's got to be hot. I imagine he is very hot. I mean, in his eyes, he, he, he had the truck to win this race or at least contend for a win. Had a chance to put up a fight and got tangled with a lap truck, with, which is unfortunately a truck that has made a lot of uh, friends, in quotation marks, in this series. 
and uh, they they come together in turn one on a long green flag run. Uh, a, a teammate would be at the benefit of any hindrance to the 77, and we'll talk about a hindrance. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I, I don't, I'm not sure what the 27 truck's goal there was other than, you know, having something like this happen. Uh, unfortunately, you know, these guys battling your primary competition for your teammate and, I mean, you pinch him off a of four. He's on the lead lap. You're a lap down. You pinch him off a of four, and I think that should have been enough right there. Like, you've already hindered him enough. Um, he's going to get by you on the next turn, um, and then you turn in off of his nose. I'm just uh, – it's, it's nothing that you want to see. I mean, this truck this truck series is relatively clean, relatively respectful racing uh, for the most part every single week, even though there are rivalries in this league. But uh, yeah, I just don't know what uh, what the point of that was for the the, the twenty seven. So, uh, I absolutely hopefully, hopefully Seth can recover though. I absolutely agree, and that's what makes something like this even more shocking to a series like the Outlaw Sim series, which is so clean week in and week out. But the pace car is in, and we're back to racing here at New Hampshire. Tyler Markle, the race leader, with twenty seven laps to go. Side by side down the back straightaway, Greg Holden, Tyler Markle. Markle trying to win his first Outlaw Sim Series race since race one of last season, but Holt will power right on through, trying to clear Tyler Markle out of turn number four, and Greg Holt is clear to the race lead. He's clear. Markle's still trying to stay with him. He's running that higher line, so Greg Holt drives it in much harder than the Markle does, but he gets a good run off the turn and gets right back to the bumper of that three truck uh, he's not gonna be able to do it this time i don't think he's starting to lose a little bit of time that 42 truck is a bit damaged but here's brad bothwell made his way all the way back up to third place now he gets around the 65 truck uh he's gonna be looking to try and get up to this race lead you know he had oh. a really really <laughs> fast truck oh here comes lingerfield back on the inside gives him a bump he's side by side as they get into turn one it's go time here if i'm so if somebody's gonna stop greg cole they've got to start Doing it now because Greg Holt, if he gets out to a lead, it is game over. And at his home track at all places, side by side through three and four. Lingerfeld sends it to the inside of the pole center. Brad Boffwell. Boffwell trying to hang on around the outside. Gilliard in fifth. Service and Fox going at it for sixth. You know, somebody blinked out there. I believe that was uh that was Land Fox there, Joshua Land Fox. He's on the inside of of max service we've seen service have some issues but he's still inside the top 10 trying to get up to the top five so great drive here from max service considering he's had such an up and down night but he's put his truck in a position here at the end of the race brad boffo now trying to clear tyler markle side by side down the front straightaway he has the inside line heading down to turn number one yeah we'll see what he can do that truck it just gets such good runs even off of that inside line, he clears Tyler Markle relatively easily through one and two. I mean, that 31 truck looks so, so good on that inside lane. Yeah, he has to track down Greg Holt. Greg Holt's not far down the road. I think he can try and do it. He's already gained about a tenth. Yeah, absolutely. Seven tenths of a second was the gap last lap. Now up six and a half tenths. Greg Holt. Again, a driver that's not going to let this go easily, even if he is the slower truck. Well, now we'll look off the rear end of Greg Holt, who is shifting. And Brad Boffwell's gap has stayed stagnant. Yeah, he is ooh, sliding a bit there, it looked like, from someone. A uh, big slide there in three and four, but uh, yeah, Boffwell kind of falling back now. Uh, now it's almost back up to a second here, so I mean, it seems like Greg Holt's uh, Greg Holt's race to lose at this point. Uh, about 20 laps to go as they come around next time by. Um, man, yeah, there's just some uh, some good fate here has fallen into that three trucks hand. His uh, main competitor, the 88, 
Joseph Causey again having an issue on a restart earlier in the race. Um, got hit as he was spinning around into turn one and two. Uh, and then uh, blew the engine, had to come down from repairs. He is now 29 laps down in 22nd place. And uh, Greg Holt there, uh, the kind of the benefactor of pitting early, uh, getting his lap back, driving by that then race leader, Seth Berger. Uh, Seth Berger pitting late, getting stuck behind a teammate of Greg Holt and uh, ended up getting together with that teammate, uh, Joshua Gathright, and both of those trucks involved in wreck, of course, in that Wilson series. Both trucks involved in bringing out a caution, our EOL'd. So that is why you see the 77 mired back in that 17th position, uh, the last car on the lead lap. Unfortunate circumstances there, but it's left us now with a bunch of questions. Right now, it looks like the point lead is slightly down in the favor of Greg Holt after one entire race. Greg Holt, if they were to finish where he is right now, I think ever would be tied or a couple points to the good over Joseph Causey for a point lead. Lingerfeld, Mark will go at it for his third position. Max Service and Joshua Fox go at it for the sixth position behind. Yeah, some good battles here as we're getting close to the end of this race. Uh, getting close to almost 15 laps to go. And yeah, Joshua Landfox is going to complete that. Yes, he is. He's going to complete the pass off of four. Gets around Max Service for that sixth place position. He has a sight set on a top five here at uh, what he considers his home track. So, man, a good run for him and a, a great run for the 42. We, we saw him hitting the wall, bouncing off the wall, sideways, spinning out at the beginning of this race. And now he's up here in third place after going long and getting the benefit of that caution. So, man, uh, what a great, great recovery drive for the 42 truck of Markle. And if Markle was able to seal this deal, remember talking to him last week at Watkins Glen. To make himself a legitimate title contender in this series, he's been able to piece together some runs. He's pulled away from the big midfield battle in the point standings. He's now almost solidly in fourth position by himself. Continuing to get podiums, Tyler Markle is starting to legitimately become a threat for the title this season without even winning a race. Now, he's going to have to do a lot of work. He's going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe of Holt and Causey. But to make it to that title race, which Tyler Markle is currently setting his sights, and uh, if he continues at the pace he is right now this season is very much on pace to make it to that title race without any issue. Tyler Markle is sitting very pretty right now, but he's got to fend off Kyle Lingerfeld, a driver who's had some rough goes, has been favored, and has had a couple home races just not go his way. Kyle Lingerfeld is looking for a turnaround this season, and a nice podium finish here at New Hampshire might do the trick as well. I definitely could, and... You know, he's had some rough luck. We've uh, favored him at the Dirt Bristol track, and uh, he had some run-in kind of with what just happened to Seth Berger. Uh, leading the race, thinking where he's going to win it. He's in the position and uh, ends up getting together with a car, brings out a caution, and he has to take the EOL. Of course, he um, was fighting that EOL, um, and then it was decided after the race, I believe, that uh, he did deserve the EOL. Gets put at the tail end of the lead lap cars. Uh, so did not go well for him there, but uh, trying to fighting hard still. Uh, he's in the playoffs at the moment, so he, he you know he's just trying to pick up momentum as we get into that time. Kyle uh, Tyler Markle gets really loose off of turn two there. Now Lingerfeld right on the back bumper as they get in the three. Up front, oh right on the tailgate through three and four and nearly sideways is both of them. Up front, Greg Holt has a two-second advantage over Boffo, but here we go, the battle for third. Lingerfeld looks down the inside, 12 laps to go. He's going to send it. Markle's going to keep his foot in it up high. Now Lingerfeld trying to use the apron to turn the truck side by side down the back. Now Tyler has the longer straightaway, the advantage again on the power first. In a turn three, Lingerfeld sends it on in there. Can he clear, Tyler? Up the track he goes, right in front of Tyler. Tyler's fighting to the outside. Still side by side down the front. Side by side racing here for the final podium position. Third place, Lingerfeld sends it in to turn one. Is he clear this time? He slides up. Not clear. The 42's still there. Nope. 
Oh, it's close. He slides right in front of the 42. 42 tries to crossover move. Now he's on the inside side by side as they head into three and four. But he's oh, not he gonna backed off. He backed off. Right. Did he use too much stuff, or did he realize, realize maybe Lingerfeld's using too much of his stuff? They're trying to work his way by. Now there's only 10 laps to go. I don't know about backing off at this point, but live to fight another day. Try to give yourself that chance to regroup and go at it again. Uh, what a uh, job there from Lingerfeld. The power is way by Tyler Margo. Put himself on the podium, though. And we got battles back here. This is Fitzpatrick and Poole for the 15th position. Yeah, Fitzpatrick not having the night he wanted after a great showing at Watkins Glen. Uh, still in the top 15. It's not a bad day. Uh, now he is uh, by the 32 truck. And he works his way up into that 15th position. 32 truck we haven't talked much about. A great paint scheme there on the No Fear truck. Uh, 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 Jeremy uh, Poole. Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy C. Poole. Sorry, thank you about that. Uh, but he's kind of had just a quiet night hanging out here in the middle of the pack. Um, stayed on the lead lap, and now he's uh, in 16th, uh, just running his race. And it uh, looks like he's going to have a decent finish here in the top 16. Uh, that's a lap down truck there of Kevin Thompson behind him in the 89 truck, not for position. But, uh, yeah, a fortunate here uh, race for the two truck of Fitzpatrick, um, especially coming off of that second place, almost first place. Woo! How about this battle for six? Daniel Park wants a piece of it as well. Daniel Park looking for his best finish of the season here in that number six truck. He's went in this battle for six. Uh, Mac, Mac Service has caught James Gilliard, but uh, Daniel Park reeled these guys in while they were battling. Now he wants to get to six, and it's a definite possibility. We're getting close, though. Almost five, uh, six laps to go here at the, the Magic Mile. Absolutely. Daniel Park, uh, his short track program has come to life. Martinsville, that six truck at pace, got involved in an early accident. And then here today, even though this is over a, a one mile, so it's not technically considered a short track, but my goodness, it raises like one at that. Uh, Daniel Park has been absolutely on it. This is not what I expected, to be completely honest. He's, uh, well, I'm going to be honest, uh, most of the time a backmarker. But he has really shown out at these short tracks and these short track-esque tracks to show that he can put on a performance. And right now in eighth and has a shot at sixth. Yeah, service has to back off a little bit here to give room to Gil. He always loose. He's loose off of four, real loose. Saves the truck, but that gives the sixth truck of Daniel Park the outside line as they get into one and two. The 81 truck, though, powers down in the bottom line. Six truck washes up the track. 81 is now clear as they come off the turn, but the six truck's going to have their momentum. He dives to the inside down the backstretch. Is side by side. The six truck goes with the 81 into three and four. Dan will send it on in there, and it'll be P7 for the six truck, or maybe not. Here comes Max around the outside. He can't get there. Daniel Park, the Indiana native, goes up to 7th. And he sets his sights on James Gilliard. And he's catching Gilliard. Big, big run there in the center of the turn. He's a little loose getting off, though. Uh, he's able to maintain his position, but uh, definitely lost a little bit of ground there on the 33 truck of James Gilliard. Uh, also, Max Service not going to go away without a fight. He's trying to power back on the outside. He's got to run. Down the front stretch they come. As, oh, he stays behind him now. The six truck move up in front of him. Not going to dive down to the inside. His service, he lets the six truck have it. Uh, six truck washing up the track now as the one and two as they come off the turn. He's going to try and set himself sights on the 33. Again, service loose as they get off the two. Coming around to two laps to go. The Mainer himself, Greg Holt. Only one win this season came at Las Vegas. Uh, was the point leader for a good chunk of this season after then hitting a stretch of bad races like Bristol Dirt and Watkins Glen. Greg Holt hit himself what we thought was going to be a slump, a slump of all but one race after blowing the engine and nearly DNFing out of the Watkins Glen race on lap number two. Greg Holt finds himself in position behind Joseph Causey in stage one, but Causey in the middle of stage two. 
sends it on a restart. Where it ends up spinning his truck out as Greg Holt takes the white flag presented by Tucson Sounder. Joseph Cossie spins the truck out on that stage to restart. Gets hit by another truck. Joseph Cossie has a blown engine. Now down in the 22nd position. He got it repaired. Got as many spots as he could. But that'll be all she wrote for the 88 truck. And in the turns 3 and 4 for the manor himself. It'll be all she wrote here from the, new, from the Granite State of New Hampshire. Greg Holt will get a home trek victory for the second time this season. Greg Holt a winner in the Outlaw Sim Series Gunman Truck Series and his ninth career Outlaw Sim Series victory. Yeah, Greg Holt, an amazing drive. Not the best qualifying that we've seen from that three truck, but he makes up for it in the race on those long runs where he is just shines. He takes home the race when Brad Bothwell will go in second. Kyle Lingerfeld will round out the podium in third. A great drive there from the 65 truck. Uh, Tyler Markle, a great recovery drive there in fourth. Daniel Park will put the six truck in seventh. And I think that might be Daniel Park's best career finish at a non-super speedway. I am very and thoroughly impressed with the progress of that six truck but I'm impressed at the battle we have at the top of the standings because Greg Holt went out and took what was his at his home track. The Granite State, a couple states over, is Maine. But here in New Hampshire, Greg Holt gets to do donuts on the front straightaway. Yeah, some good looking donuts there from that three truck. Thoroughly deserves a great strategy call there by him to pit early, put himself in a position. If a caution did come out, he had unlapped himself. And, I mean, it, it, the caution did come out, and uh, he was the benefactor there, uh, being in the proverbial race lead until Tyler Markle stayed out, but uh, just had a little bit better of a getaway on that restart than Tyler Markle did. Took the race lead and just ran away with it after that. Unbelievable the performance Greg Holt put on today. But we're going to go ahead and step aside. We'll be back with post-race interviews and post-race coverage and more for the 10th round of 22 here at the virtual New Hampshire Motor Speedway. The Granite State, Loudoun, New Hampshire, played host to round 10 of 22 for the Outlaw Sim Series. Come in truck schedule. We'll get post-race reactions and more on the far side of this break. Don't you go anywhere. Have you found yourself trying to hide your joy because you're unhappy with your teeth? Your smile is the first feature noticed in an interview, on a date, or in family photos. We want you to be able to shine bright as your best self. And our teeth whitening system is the perfect step toward restoring your confidence. Sound art is a product that is a speaker and it's art. We combine it together and we call it sound art. What makes it so unique that any picture can be your speaker? Sound art gives you the high quality sound without the ugly speaker. This isn't a picture with the speaker, the picture is the speaker. Just imagine your wedding picture uh, uploaded onto a canvas and now it's speaking 10,000 tunes. I mean, it's a very cool concept. What we like so much about it that you can take anything that means something very special to you, upload it on the canvas, have it hanging up in your room, your balcony, wherever you want to put it, and now it's a speaker. I mean, how cool is that? It's, it's, it's something that we have that, and no one has. No one has this product. It's just a great gift to give anybody. It's just a neat concept. Around here we say, art never sounded so good.
Welcome race fans back to the virtual New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Loud New Hampshire again played host to round number 10 of 22 on the Outlaw Sim Series calendar and it was a thriller. A uh, one a race that you're not going to forget. I'm sorry, I'm very sick and I think it's been uh, very evident throughout the broadcast tonight and my mind has been very scattered and I've been very scattered vocally. But that doesn't mean that we don't have the amazing opportunity to talk to our two-time race winner who won at his home track tonight, the Granite State here in New Hampshire, uh, Greg Holt. This one, uh, a lot went on uh, in, in this race. Several different m shifts in momentum throughout tonight's race, and you're the one who comes out on top. Tell us about it. I just, you know, tried to, to keep it out of the wall and away from people, which is... You know, I was loose, they were loose, I was tight, they were tight. Eh, it was a fun race. Uh, I didn't really know what was going to happen. Uh, I, I wish uh, what happened with Seth didn't happen. I wanted to know how it was going to play out. Yeah, we, we were thinking about that, and we, we were kind of confused why both of y'all were going as long as y'all were. And then, of course, you, you short-pitted uh, by quite a few laps. But but still, what was, I guess, the, when, when was your plan to pit there and... And why well, was that? I was gonna, I was gonna run it out as long as I could, but I, I ended up going in basically splitting the segment in half um, right. because we had to pit, and I, we still had an extra, you know, two sets of tires. And I was, uh, I it used up a little bit of my stuff trying to get up there to Seth, and then when me and um, uh, Lingerfelt there, we got together when we were racing. I'd lost a little bit of time, so I was like, eh, I'll just, uh, I'll go in now and we'll. we'll get the jump on them and then see if we can hold them off when we get out front. Maybe we'll save until they catch up. Well, Greg, only 27 laps led today, but it, it surely didn't feel like that or seem like that throughout the race, but there's just so much that went on. Uh, I, I now look at your, your season view. I know you don't put too much, uh, you, you don't buy too much into it, I, I, I'd say, but today the, the hard race for Joseph after losing it on, on uh, one of those restarts in the middle of the race, and getting clipped by another vehicle that put him behind the eight ball. He had a destroyed engine. It had several uh, laps of damage, uh, several minutes of repairs, which put you in prime position now to, I think, have the point lead by a couple points or be right there when, within a few points. The, the massive shift back to your favor in that regard. Do you feel that? Is that ever in your mind when, when you're talking about a season overall like that? I mean, it's, I mean, it's called, we're... Me and Kazi, we race in every, almost every league that we race in. We race against each other, so it's we're always battling each other. And, you know, it is it is what it is. It's just good to be up there, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, these things, especially when you get a bunch of short tracks and stuff, and so many cars, you know, you, you're running 30 cars a week. You have one bad week, and it can, it can dock you 25, 30 points. Or, or even more with the, uh, you know, when you think about the stage points. So... It's gonna happen. I'm sure this. It'll. I'm sure it'll change the, the whole way through. It'll keep bouncing back and forth. Well, I guess we're all here for because it it's been thoroughly entertaining, thus far. And once again, I, I asked you earlier, what does it feel to come here to the track that I guess you can call your home track? But you, you say you've been here several times. You got it done. I imagine you've won here before. How does it feel? It feels good. It feels good to get another win. I mean, it's hard to win in this series. Crap. I've We've had so many chances to win week in and week out, and we just can't pull them through. You know, something always happens. So uh, it's good to have a little bit of luck on the side. You know, I, I like it. It's good to represent win, win for the home track. I like it. Absolutely. Well, Greg, congratulations on your second win on the season. If I'm not mistaken, your ninth win in your Outlaw Sim Series career. Uh, you celebrate this one and celebrate it hard. Before we let you go, though, I'll give you the floor to shout out. Whoever you get a shout out, thank you. We're going to thank for getting it yep. done today here at New Hampshire. Well, thank you. I would like to dedicate this win to a fellow sim racer that was part of our team for sim racing, uh, performance sim sports. His name is Johnny Button. He passed away today um, in the hospital. He had COVID and didn't make it. Um, so I'd just like to dedicate this one to him and you know let his family and everybody know that we we're thinking of him and we wish him the best. Well, absolutely. Uh, again, my condolences to all of those affected by uh, by by the passing of your uh, of your friend. Uh, but once again, congratulations on your win today here at New Hampshire. 
Uh, best of luck to you next week at Pocono. I hope we're talking to you some more then. Thanks, Emerson. Thank you. And uh, again, race winner, driver of the number three, Greg Holt. Again, you can't ever count this guy out. There's a reason why he's now won nine Outlaw Sim Series races, the most out of any driver in their outlaw, in the you know, in the short sin of the Outlaw Sim Series. Now we've had, you know, of course, the the past iteration of Outlaws on the console, but strictly of iRacing, Greg Holt now back atop that win total, uh, that wins list there now with nine. But we look now down to second place tonight's in tonight's race is the guy who now got his fifth pull on the season. Devin, you're standing by. Yeah, so we're bringing up Brad Bothwell. Brad Bothwell, welcome to the booth. You got a copy. Yes, I do. Hey, man, it's nice to talk to you at the end of the race, as always. Uh, again, a great qualifying lap put in by yourself. Uh, maybe the start of a new streak here uh, of uh, qualifying on pole, but uh, you backed it up with a second place finish. Um, I know you wanted one more there. Uh, you gave it a shot at the end of the race. Kind of walk us through what your thoughts were uh, for that last and final restart. Well, I knew I had a, a good long run car. In it. I mean, the, the car was great overall. Um, I, I just made, made two big mistakes today. The start of the race when I had the pole, I uh, started off in first gear and I checked the whole field up. And then uh, after that, um, the one restart I had to lead and I forgot that I couldn't change lanes because I'm so used to running just to opens. So when I jumped it and I just went straight up and then the last one, I took two tires on just to get the track position, but I should have put some more tape on too. I think that's what was killing me. Yeah, those adjustments and pit stop uh, definitely uh, can make or break the difference. Uh, but uh, man, you had to drive your way back through the field, like you said, a couple of mistakes, uh, one with the, uh, the the beginning there and the, the second one, which one probably hurt the most as it was in the middle of the race and you had to serve the drive through under green conditions. Uh, but just talk us about making your way back up through the field, trying to navigate that traffic. Well, once I figured out it wasn't a lap down, uh, I was just go time. Um, I knew the setup was really great on the long run and I just had to push it hard. And even that whole run, I think when we came in the pit, when the caution came out, I mean, my tires were only at 70, 71, 72 on the right side. So they were running really even for me running as hard as I was. Yeah, and you, you've talked to us about that before with uh, the setups, you know, you're just uh, getting better with the long run setups. You, you definitely have the, uh, the short run speed in the truck. I mean, that's evident in the qualifying uh, setups and the qualifying times that you could put up and you know, uh, we saw at the beginning of the year, it's just been uh, from the beginning of the year, it's just been getting better and better and better. And I mean, it, it's getting better at the right time. We're starting to get our way into, uh, you know, where it's starting to get to playoff time. I mean, how, how are you feeling? I mean, you're, you're in the playoffs now, but, you know, how are you feeling for the rest of the way of the regular season? And then, of course, you know, once we get into the playoffs. Well, the last two races uh, have been bad for me. Um, and then it put me right there, like right on the cut line. And I knew going forward, we had to have a great, you know, going there. So me, James and, uh, Jeremy have been putting in a lot of work with these setups and, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I just had to push hard. I knew I had to get a great finish tonight and hopefully, and again, next week at Pocono. Well, if there's anyone who can get it done, I am sure it is. Uh, that team that you have surrounded where you're surrounded yourself with. I mean, y'all have come out with some great setups uh, and it's just getting better, man. I wish you luck the rest of the way. We're, we're probably going to be talking to you again. At least I hope we are. Um, it's always great fun to talk about that mean green 31 machine. So uh, good luck. Uh, congratulations tonight. Good luck the rest of the way. And um, yeah, en enjoy the second place, man. That was a great drive back through the field. Okay. Thank you. And again, that is second place finisher, driver of the number 31, Brad Bothwell. And now I get to bring on a driver. I think this might be a nice run for you, Kyle Lingerfell, coming into today's race. He started 17th, drove your way through the field, battled a very, very technical track that's so hard to pass, and found yourself on the, on the podium tonight after a hard-fought battle there with t new new teammate Tyler Markle, at least for the season, uh... T tell us all about that battle and uh, how was it battling Tyler? 
Uh, that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun tonight. Um, unfortunately, only came home third. Pretty disappointed with that. Uh, Got to give a shout out to Reaper Speed Lab. Randall Fox does a great job setting me up every week, uh, especially right after that shock adjustment. This setup was still uh, right, uh, right on. So um, it was a great time uh, racing Mark Alert at the end. I got into him once going into one. Uh, didn't mean to. Uh, but other than that, uh, we had a great battle. Unfortunately, I let Brad get away there from me some, and I wasn't able to catch back up to him for a second because I was running him down. But uh, it is what it is, and we'll move on to Pocono. Well, uh, again, I know you've had a, a rough stretch of races, especially races you wanted to perform at. But now we're, you know, with six races left, five races left the regular season, leaving tonight's race, uh, a third-place finish. Does this kind of put you... Uh, with, a, with a step in the right direction looking forward as he tried to gear up for a playoff run? Yeah, for sure, definitely. I uh, felt like I've had what should have been numerous runs uh, ending up up front and uh, all have failed. So uh, to finally be able to pull something off uh, halfway through the season or just before the playoffs is uh, it's a good time to get momentum again. We know how it, the playoffs go. Absolutely. Uh, and again, you last season's playoffs you really sp hit a nice spark to propel you a lot farther than i think anyone even saw you last season which has a lot of eyes on you heading into you know this year's postseason and seeing where where you'll stack up against the you know caliber of drivers we have this season especially now putting in holt who uh you know, i think will knock a lot of people down a spot from last season <laughs> but uh sure. nonetheless you, you're speaking about pocono uh the first uh, five races between now and the, and the playoffs how do you feel about the tricky triangle uh, when we ran there last season, I was pretty quick. I was running uh, top seven with old tires and um, ended up getting myself on cold tires after a yellow. Uh, hopefully won't do that next Wednesday, but uh, hopefully can still run real strong there and uh, get some stage wins and we'll hopefully win the race. That's the plan every week. Absolutely. Well, Kai, I know you already mentioned uh, Reaper, but is there anyone else you'd like to shout out and uh, you know just thank for your podium finish tonight here at New Hampshire? Yeah, um, I'd like to thank uh, Raging Cajun Graphics and Design. Uh, he built me a great 911 tribute scheme for tonight, so that was awesome to be able to run that tonight. Wish I could have ran that last week, but that's all right. And then um, I'd like to thank uh, everyone at DHR as well. Absolutely. Well, Kyle Lingerfeld, a phenomenal show there at the end with your teammate Tyler Markle. Again, uh, couldn't take our eyes off of it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so congratulations on besting your teammate. Congratulations on the third place finish tonight here at new hampshire best of luck to you next week at pocono hopefully we're talking to you some more then yes sir i'll talk to you soon thank you driver of the number 65 kyle lingerfeld third place finisher tonight and again uh three different drivers on the podium with three completely different mindsets and still a whole bunch of smiles all on the podium love to hear it you love to see it devin what say you a very interesting race at a track that uh, sometimes doesn't produce interesting races. I mean, we had quite a bit of drama throughout the entire race uh, from beginning to end, you know, with uh, different penalties and uh, different, you know, front runners and guys who thought we thought were going to be uh, set up to win this race having issues. And, uh, you know, you don't want to see it on one hand, but then, of course, you know, it makes that, uh, you know, that you know, just uncertainty of who's going to win and anything can happen. Um, you know, it just makes it more, you know, emotional. I guess that's the right word. Not really, you know, good or bad, but just emotional on all sides. And that's what racing is. And it's, you know, you sometimes you don't want to see it. Sometimes you do. And it's just how it goes. But I mean, that's what tonight was. It was emotional. It was exciting. It was, uh, it was a great race from beginning to end. Uh, congratulations again to Greg Holt. Congratulations to our other podium finishers, Brad Bothwell and Kyle Lingerfeld. Uh, well deserved. And um, yeah, we're, we'll get the uh, final rundown here. Well, yeah, yeah, as you said, a lot of emotions and a lot was out at, uh, up at play tonight here at New Hampshire. I think it's a nice sweet spot in the schedule to kind of add to the very unique race track we have before us. A track that's so hard to pass, but at the same time, Everybody tries their hardest to make those passes work. And it was a quite a phenomenal show tonight with Greg Holt, of course, the winner, leading only 27 laps. Brad Bothwell, the pole sitter, didn't lead at the drop of the green flag, but he got himself three laps led in that 31 machine. Kyle Lingerfeld brings home a podium, besting Tyler Markle in that battle. Joshua Fox gets home, gets that fifth place finish. You brought his name up at the beginning of the show. 
and he definitely performed. James Gilliard was fast all day long. A six stage finish will not do that 33 truck justice. And Daniel Park, oh, so impressed with the run Daniel Park put in tonight. Seventh place finish for the six truck. Hoping this is bigger and better things for Dan Park. Maybe even a potential playoff push. He's he's got a lot a lot a little ways th there in the standings. He might need to win it to make his way in it. But still, Daniel Park putting it seventh tonight. Very impressed. Max Service there in eighth. Jesse Adams ninth, and Devin Smith will round out the top ten. Yeah, and then Jeremiah Stutzman is going to bring his seventy one truck home in eleventh. Brandon Richardson, who had some trouble at the beginning of the race, he gets a nice recovery up to twelfth. Doug Solom started dead last in this race, quietly had a really good night, bringing it home 13th. That'll help him out in the standings. He was currently 20th at the start of the race, so maybe we'll see him move up just a little bit. Uh, Matthew Setzer in 14th there. Seth Fitzpatrick, uh, we saw him. He was kind of mired in the back and then, uh, you know, ends up in the middle of the pack here at the end of the race, staying on the lead lap in 15th. Seth Berger. We thought he was going to have this race won for a minute and at least make it interesting with Greg Holt and uh, unfortunately involved in an accident with the 27 truck uh, a little bit further down there in 19th. But uh, Seth Berger gets relegated down to 16th, having to serve that EOL penalty uh, due to uh, the race uh, being uh, cautioned. Uh, it's Jeremy C. Poole is going to be the last car on the lead lap in 17th. Farron Elam Jr., first car lap down. Joshua Gathray, we talked about earlier. 19th kevin tops two laps down in 20th and then uh, heartbreakers row continues on with randall barnett be one of the last drivers to finish this race he'll cross the line 21st five laps down joseph kazi pulled it in a few laps in the finish he'll finish 49 laps down in 22nd after fighting every last lap he could until it was impossible that he'd gain any more spots because he got 20 seconds to try to maintain Whatever point lead he can over Holt, but it might not be even enough there. And then Lacey in his second out loss in the series start is uh, two for two on front row starts and two for two at not finishing the race. Uh, John Mustaine comes out 24th, 74 laps down. Eric Peck 25th, 87 laps down. Adam Gardner comes up 26th, 104 laps down. Helps out race control the rest of the evening. Andrew Schroeder, one of the early exits tonight, 190 laps down at 27th. And Garrett Valsey in 28th, 138 laps down. Our social media coverage tonight by Vincent Court says uh, is classified in 29th. Uh, but he was obviously not into race tonight. He was taking pictures for our lovely social media platforms. And while we're at it, I guess that's a segue. Let's throw them up on the screen. Of course, we have our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash pit stop TV. Our Instagram at pit underscore stop underscore TV. Our Twitter at pit stop TV underscore our YouTube YouTube.com forward slash U, uh, forward slash C forward slash pit stop TV one and our Twitch channel on Twitch TV forward slash pit underscore stop underscore TV. And well, what's coming up on the channel while we don't have a graphic for that this evening, what's coming up on the channel this week is we have a couple back to back Bristol races tomorrow night. The MSRA truck series takes to the high ranks at the concrete last great Coliseum Bristol Motor Speedway 8, 15 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. And then Friday night, the MSA National Series and their Xfinity cars take to Bristol as well. 8.15 p.m. Eastern, you won't want to miss it then. Next Tuesday evening, we're potentially crowning Daniel Falkingham the champion with the sixth playoff race of seven at Chicagoland, 6.40 p.m. Eastern. You won't want to miss all the action there at what's left of that mile and a half. And then next Wednesday, it's a doubleheader with the Cars Esports Tour. Race four out of six at the newly released Hickory. That's going to be a blast to see how those late models fare at the new track. Very tight pit exit. We'll see what happens then. And, of course, next Wednesday night, of course, at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, as always, uh, iRacing provided, <laughs> will be race number 11 of 22 on the season at the Tricky Triangle, the Pocono Raceway. You won't want to miss it. And of course, Pit Stop TV broadcasts are also not possible without the help of our lovely partners here at Pit Stop TV, like Tucson Sound Art, your picture your music. Use promo code PITSTOPTV at checkout for 10% off of your wall-mounted sound art device to s today. How about race pace setups? There's that Discord link I was telling you about. If you're looking for GT3 setups, pick up pace with race pace, a community-driven setup shop and driver development program. 
Of course, a huge shout out to Permanent Makeup and Cryo in Maine, where you deserve the best care that money can buy. And with Flash Media, the official graphic and camera provider of Pit Stop TV and Fam Racing Videos. Buy a race fan for the racing community. And a little bit out of order there, Devin. But before we leave tonight here in New Hampshire, we kind of got our thoughts already from New Hampshire. And in the Pocono, five races left in the regular season. Okay, so another track that eh, people go, mm, I don't know how that race is going to go from an entertainment perspective, but we saw even a track like New Hampshire where you know, maybe we're coming in thinking, eh, I don't know how it's going to go. We saw a lot of action, a lot of, a lot to play for in the point standings. What, what say you heading into the Tricky Triangle? Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. These guys, they're, they're so evenly uh, distributed, you know, throughout the field. There's battles all over the place, and... I can think that's going to continue at Pocono. I mean, it's very easy to get runs down there, down that whole, you know, that that very long front straightaway and even the long pond straight uh, into turn two, the tunnel turn. So uh, I think there's uh, definitely going to be some good hard racing and there's opportunities to pass at every turn. Maybe not the tunnel turn so much, but uh, definitely in turn one or turn three. Um, and then, of course, you got to be careful down that front straightaway. If you're in front, you're punching a hole. Uh, for the guy behind you so uh, we could see a lot of uh, in, you know that breaking the draft mentality uh down that front stretch it'll be interesting to see for sure um also i mean you know just coming up on the channel i mean two back-to-back -back bristol races uh those are going to be entertaining uh bristol's always entertaining no matter what series it's in uh and then of course uh falkingham going for his title in norwick on, on two, next tuesday night um, man, that's uh, you, you got to tune in for that to see uh, them crown possibly uh, Falkingham in his championship there. Um, and then also uh, the Cars Tour going to Hickory, brand new release track. Uh, I mean, it's just there's so much action throughout the week on Pit Stop TV. It's great to see, great entertainment. Uh, and of course, I mean, we got some pretty good broadcasters, so it's always going to be uh, interesting there, I would say. But uh, you know, a little bit of plug there, self plug, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's always just a great time here on Pit Stop TV. A lot of good stuff going on. Absolutely. And of course, uh, I couldn't do this without my amazing partners in crime tonight, like Devin Zimmerman on commentary for me, uh, with, with me tonight. And I got to say, Devin, uh, for pulling a lot of the workload tonight. I know I, I'm technically the lead commentator, but man, you pulled a lot of work tonight for me. Uh, Kept, kept me from not speaking as much as I should, and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, pull, pulling a lot of the workload and on the mic, but Vincent Cortez pulling his own workload on social media coverage as well. Deserves a huge shout out there. You can check out all of his lovely posts tonight on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Of course, I'm Emerson Arden, uh, pressing all the buttons and uh, trying not to destroy your ears with my sick voice tonight, saying that'll do it from the Granite State this evening. We're happy to have had you all here and tuning in. And joining us for tonight's action, and we hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. And for all of us at Pit Stop TV, again, Devin Zimmerman, Vincent Cortez, and myself, Emerson Arden, have a great night. You'll stay safe. You'll stay cool. If there's storms coming, you'll stay safe. If it's hot, you'll stay cool. If it's cold, I don't know if it's cold yet. It's September. You'll stay warm. I don't know. You'll stay safe. We'll see y'all next time. Thank y'all, and we'll see y'all then. <laughs>